We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s, and the rest is... Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is the company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier & Thompson. Office? Collier & Thompson. Bar? You got it. Collier & Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier & Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Collier & Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Collier & Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CollierAndThompson.com. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Rise and shine, St. Louis. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After on KPN-TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. At the Morning After STL on YouTube and on TMASTL.com with Tim McKernan, Doug Vaughn, Iggy Strode, The Plowboy, and Action Jackson. 707 in St. Louis, you are listening to TMA. It's presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Well, Welcome, friends, to the Munganess, St. Louis Acura, Munganess, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota. 7 o'clock hour, Timothy Michael McKernan, Douglas Selvin, Vaughn, Kenneth Iggy Stroh, the Plowhawk, and Action Jackson with you on the show. Get involved. Callier and Thompson, phone line 636-9004-TMA. Jeff Lottman, uh, Compass Realty, text inbox 314-881-TMA5. And the Design Air Heating and Cooling email today, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. And, Doug, here you go. You talk about what NC State has done, and they knock off Duke. It's fun. March Madness is here. Tournament. we got to make a free falls in March. I know that much. Uh, I didn't see the Dukey lose. It doesn't matter. They're in the tournament. What anyway. about the job Kim English is doing? Kim English is doing a job it's over Kim there. Kim English going to come to Columbia and rescue the Missouri basketball uh, program. Well, it needs rescuing. He'd be my pick, I think, right now. Uh, but let's see what he does in March. <laughs> what a win over Creighton. Yeah, Creighton. Boy, this Creighton bunch. Missouri Valley, nope, we're out. We're too good for it. Then they move on, and, and they play well, Timmy, until last night, and they got, they got, they got whooped. I watched Illinois' opponent <sighs> for today, last night, Ohio State-Iowa game. What'd they do? Ohio State. Beat Iowa. Beat up on them a little bit. So, Illinois, Ohio State, 5 p.m. today. One yeah. of the brackets revealed Sunday. Sunday yeah. night, yeah. I think Mizzou's in. Wild, wild card. Do they play? Have they no. played in the tournament? They don't play the tournament yet. How, or have they played in their SEC tournament and lost? Yes. Like the Georgia game? Yes. Okay. So, they're officially out. Yes. It's hard to tell Complete when the season winless. ends and when the tournament team the games start for the... Conference for Mizzou, it ended about two months ago, maybe three months ago, to go through an entire conference schedule and not win a game. Pretty unbelievable. Why do you say that? Well, I don't think it's ever happened before to Missouri. Nick Gates has two years left, or if he gets uh, another bad season, he's out. I mean, he got leaked. Oh, no. I don't know. Absolutely not. He's gone if they have something. I mean, they won't. I can't imagine another season like this because I think he could fire in the middle of the season. Yeah, yeah, probably. No, he with a new athletic director. He is. Uh... Do you agree with that, Jackson? Since you're the yep. only person who really watches Missouri basketball regularly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kim English. A, no, Go no, ahead. I'm sorry. What's up? I interrupted you. I apologize. Oh, it's all good. Uh, if he has another clunker, it's uh, it's over for him. But I have faith. Yeah, this was this was not just a clunker. This was a an all time disaster for the university. Well, speaking of Kim English, he was uh, talking about that. Uh, well, I don't know what he was talking about, Doug, but he was asked about his marital status after they beat Quayton. Well, that would make sense. That's usually where you where you go. 
Especially if you hit a buzzer beater or something. Say, how, how's your relationship with your wife? Great win, Kim. You getting divorced? Mm -hmm. Second round. Hey, coach. So you are trending on black Twitter. Hmm. The exact Twitter. Come on, black Twitter. <laughs> like you're okay. Excited. Okay. And so they're wanting to know who this, what's his marital status. <laughs> I think that's our first marital status question <laughs> in a tournament that's history. Important. The exact question is, do you have single or in the house? <laughs> um, I'll um, you can pass. Man, yeah, no comment. I'm locked in on this team. I'm locked in on our team right now. What a nice question. He was asked if he's single. Is yeah. that what it was? Yeah. yeah. We have a great industry. <clears throat> I don't feel that way sometimes. What I mean, if What if I was in that huge win. scrum or it sounded like there were like five people at press conference? What if I was in there and it yeah, was Yeah, let's a, it put was you a, right in the middle of the no, story. No, if it, was a, if it was a female head coach and I, I said... I was waiting for that. If, I was a, if it was a female head coach and I go, Coach, what's your marital status? I think people would have laughed or I'd have been kicked out and probably lost you, my credential. Yeah, the latter. You'd have been kicked out and yeah. lost your credential. Everybody laughed at that one. Yeah, why? They're, they're bad now. What, what, what's wrong with... Why would you ask that question? What's the point of it? Well, I think a lot of... People get credentials now that don't come from the traditional media. Not that the traditional media has got anything to be proud of either. But at least there were some checks. At least you would have to answer to your boss if you did something like that. And now if you're running a website out of your garage, who are you answering to? If you get a credential... Would you say your lineup changed worked out pretty well for you tonight? Well, it's nice to be back home where you got a quality question to yeah. start this thing off. Yeah, questions <laughs> like that. I was at that press car. Lurus has said that. I said, oh, my God almighty. <laughs> but if you just if you've started your own website or started your own podcast with a friend and can get yourself a credential and get down there, you've got nobody to answer to. And so sometimes you get good people and sometimes not so good people. No, a female basically saying, Kim, you're a very good-looking man. Are you single for the ladies out there? I love the PR guy gets on there and goes, you don't have to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he should have said. No. Yeah. Is he single? Doug? I, I don't know. He's a good-looking dude. He's very attractive. Uh, Todd Reesing is consumed by Missouri basketball, but I thought he was rock chalk, and he's sending... He sent in four texts uh, here in the early going. Jackson, are you playing him, or Plowhawk, are you playing him? I'm trying to keep track I of these matchups. Jackson, I assure you, I will take him down. Wow! Mm, I'm look gonna, at this. I'm it's gonna, like Tiger Woods, Stephen Ames. Usually the first round of my season at the Fan Pan Club Championship. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure to avoid that same outcome this year. Really? Yeah, yeah I'm going to play a uh, Doug, what is Todd Reesing's uh, gin? Do you oh, hell, I have no idea. 18. KG's got this thing locked down. He's got everybody in except for, I think, eight wild cards or eight alternates. Yeah. Well, it's nice to get a producer that hustles a little bit and get some things done. Just waiting to see where that landed. <laughs> <laughs> that did not hit well. <laughs> well, I can't do it. I'm not no. on the page. No. <laughs> right. uh, how about the job Dennis Gates is doing? Crickets from my boy Jackson. <laughs> Can we talk about the all-time quote by Jackson preseason before this season when asked about the lack of talent? This team is just so well coached. That makes no sense, but I'm texting in traffic. I'm a grit guy. Those are Todd Reesing's five texts since the program started this morning, Doug. Wow. Well, enjoy what's yourself, Todd. What's your grit? <laughs> Whatever, man. I don't know what you want from me. Oh, you're frustrated at this point. These way. guys are some dumb mother... Oh! <laughs> I can only go off the information I have at the time, and the information mm -hmm. I had at the time was that Dennis Gates knew how to coach a basketball program. No, we're so not so sure. if you want to, you know, reverse engineer every single take, once new information comes out, you're going to find a lot of people are wrong. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying I'm wrong either. Well, Dean Smith wouldn't have got this team to... Him. Yeah, you can yeah. Only, but that's also on Gates. He, he brought the talent in, so... Yeah, that has nothing to do with coaching. Yeah, not yes, like in-game in, in coaching. <laughs> yes, it does. But recruiting. Recruiting, recruiting is, a, is a huge part of coaching. Yeah, what I'm talking about in-game stuff, he's saying he's a bad reason he's saying he's a bad coach. Right. When, when someone usually says well-coached, they're talking about in-game stuff, less so recruiting. Yeah. Well, what did you see in-game that made him look like a well-coached team? He took a team that was undersized last year and won a hell of a lot of games. He, he, but he had a couple of NBA players, too. One, and both of them... Neither of them play regular NBA minutes, nor were they going to be NBA players before the season really started. Uh, well. 
So I to guess. me, that's good coaching if you can take guys who weren't going to play in the NBA. Well, they, in the NBA. they did have an exciting year last year. But they overachieved last especially year. in basketball, I guess football too, recruiting is about 80% of the job. 100%. He has a top 10 recruiting class coming in next year. Yeah, we hope. Not anymore in football. It's just who pays you more. Well, that's, that's hoops also, I guess. You know. I don't know if they'll ever... <laughs> now, that's when we had some real analysts on the show. <laughs> that, exactly right. that is a video, oh, man, of all time. Uh, and, he, and he had just as good a chance of getting it right as we do. <laughs> but to bury the damn game clock. No. Uh, this is the Mungan S. St. Louis Act. Your Mungan S. Burkhart Alton Toyota. 7 o'clock hour. Hello, friends. And... Welcome in, Manganas, St. Louis Acura, Manganas, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota. I feel like Doug a few times a week. Somebody will email me asking for a connection to Jamie Burkhardt, and uh, and I put them together, and magic is made, just like mm -hmm. that. But if you would like to just text or call uh, the number, they have a secret number for our listeners, 314-252-0029. Go online at stlouisacura.com or altontoyota.com and work with the best. The best is Munganas, St. Louis Acura, Munganas, Burkhardt, Alton Toyota, sponsor of our 7 o'clock hour and the Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown. And, Doug, the players are on the course at uh, yeah. the players. Yeah. And Iggy sounds like he's not happy about it, but they are on the course, and I can't, okay. I can't, change, I can't change that. No, no, no that's a fact. I'm not mad they're on the course. I'm mad that... I just get players that just can't stop making double bogeys. Well, you picked him. One of was my highest prized player. Yeah, <clears throat> Salatoris. Idiot. <clears throat> he had a whopping two birdies yesterday. It was the horse. The course was so gettable yesterday, Doug. Two birdies. Ran. Well, you should have done better research then. Brandon Tyler. I'm three under going to a par five. I'm going to get to four. No, I'm going to make a double bogey and then bogey my way into two two over. Oh, ass. Since you're keeping count, this is my sixth text, Tim. Like I said when I called in, love you, Jackson. He called in? That was uh, during Daddy's Donuts. Oh, oh, wow, okay. I don't wow. remember that. <laughs> I mean, we get a lot of texts and calls I just don't remember. But either way, I wasn't here. Daddy's Donuts, Doug. Okay. <laughs> uh, like I said when I called in, love you, Jackson, but I have to call out the worst season in MU history. It's from Todd Racing. Do what you want to do. Have fun in August through November. Jackson's going to be a killer by the time he's 40. Oh. Dead, straight killer. Uh, I'm just telling you. <laughs> he went from a docile producer to just being I like just, me. He just kind of recognizes, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope not. He didn't really win, quote, a lot of games. He had a horrendous non-conference schedule and was average after that point. That's from Timmy the Tickler? Timmy the Tickler is usually stag-oriented. I mean, they got their ass beat by Kansas last year, but outside of that, they beat Ohio Iowa State, who's really good. UCF. I, I don't want to rehash 2022-2023. Doug, you did want to talk about 2022-2023 Missouri basketball. It's a topic that's at the forefront of St. Louisans' minds this morning. It, it, it was an interesting season, and it gave us high hopes for the future. And then to just have this complete dud of a season this year, I'm mean, just a disaster. That's what's so frustrating, because you really thought they had hired the right guy and we're headed in the right direction and then they just drop off a cliff it's extremely frustrating. Saw it coming but as as much as teams can fall off a cliff one year they can also re-rise immediately the next year so to just harp on it i think is i mean you have to acknowledge it but you got to move on like eventually you just got the season's over you move on to the next year again. so we can't talk about it no anymore? i said you have to acknowledge <laughs> it i said you have to acknowledge it but we're not like promoting any solution to it. We're just saying it's bad. Like, it's not hard to say it's bad when they don't win a game in 2024. Yeah. So it's just bad. They had a terrible season. They didn't get the right guys in the transfer portal, and now the season's over, so we look ahead to next year. Huh. All right. I'm starting to become attracted to my wife's father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we need to break that, that ice. Jackson, don't stress I'm here for your filet and Mizzou basketball takes. That's a Mr. Siders. And that's who Jackson's playing in the That's who I'm taking on, yep. Todd Reesing is an effing dork. Jackson, you can have my wife for a night if you want. That's from Midge or Madge. God bless. Thanks, Midge mm. or Madge. Okay. Jackson's a man in love. It's true. Right. Yeah. I'm so, going to pass on his proposal, but I appreciate the sentiment. Yeah. In the producer, in the radio producer ecosystem, anger starts creeping in starting at the age of 26. That's yep. from former mm. fan page moderator Neil Allen Craig Paquette. 
smart. Once you have to start paying your own health insurance, you start to get pissed. Even though Jackson, I already know, has done that prior to age of 26. You just think overall, as a producing core, I think 26 is about the age where, okay. You feel like you got angry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you? Life just beats you down, Doug. But I think that's <laughs> what hardens you in the end and makes you tougher. Yeah. Iggy, when did you get angry? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was angry with a lot of hosts I produced for. Uh-oh. Well, not a lot. <laughs> what stories are we <laughs> pulling yeah. out of this bag? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. What do we got Not a here? lot. Just a couple. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was always angry so at many. some point because mm-hmm. I always got fired for some reason. <laughs> for some, for reason. some reason. Yeah, believe, believe it or not, I was never fired for my performance. Never your fault, no. <laughs> No, I'm one of the few guys that can say that and be uh, right. Right. There's some guys that have been... Nobody ever gets fired because it's their better. fault. They had some injuries. I mean, there's some hosts that have been fired and blame it on everybody else but themselves. Myself, it was either they wanted to bring their own people in, it was new ownership, or they didn't have enough money, usually. I mean, Claves, I wasn't fired for anything. I was fired because I was too good. <laughs> yeah, that always happens. Nah, that's amazing. <laughs> and always humble. <laughs> always humble. <laughs> I was fired because I was too good. Well, you have two two choices. You either have your producer ratchet up the game so your show can be as good as the one I'm producing, or you get rid of me so now all the shows can be mediocre and we just go about our business. So they were trying not to be good? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you need to be average? We don't want to be good? No. Just... So let's fire the guy who's great? And so everyone else looks better in comparison? Yeah. That's what happened. Boy, that's a nice spin. That's, that's my take. <laughs> I wasn't doing anything wrong. Man. I had to get suspended for getting Bobby Orr on the air. So what does that tell you? I'm suspended for getting one of the greatest hockey players of all time. Hold on a air. second. You're saying that you were suspended from your job. It was this KFNS or 1380 because you got Bobby Orr as a guest on the station? Yeah, on Frank's show. Doug? <laughs> you've, you've told that story once before, but I, I'm forgetting some of the details. Somebody else wanted him later in the day, and you got yeah, him earlier. Well, I'm, I'm not talking on a turn here. I mean, Kleibs would, would verify this, but because he was the program director at the time when Greg uh, Marisek owned the place, and uh, we did a segment called Greats of the Game. And every week I'd get somebody from a different sport on for Frank's Great of the Game segment, and I just happened to have a number for Bobby Orr, and I called him, like, on a Tuesday and said, we do this thing on Friday. Can you join us? Because, yeah, no problem. What time? All right. So we had Bobby Orr. Two minutes after he's on the air, the hotline rings his claves. What's Bobby Orr doing on the air? I said, he's our great of the game. Tony's been trying to get him on our show for months. I said, what's the statute of limitations on a guest? It took me one call. Be in my office. I said, well, you want me to go in there now? You probably aren't going to be here for another hour. Now, hold on, it seemed like that might have been a shot. Mm-hmm. Did you catch it? Yes, I did. I did well, catch it. His show was at 3, and he'd usually come in about 12. Um, so I went in the office, he's under suspended. I just walked out, walked by Greg's office, and said, uh, Clay's just suspended me for getting Bobby Orr on the air. I'll be at the, be sure. <clears throat> I'll be at the pool if you need me. What pool? My apartment pool. Oh. So know. you think Marisek <laughs> might be hanging out at your apartment pool? <laughs> No, I just call me if you need me, but I'll be at the pool. <laughs> and uh, Greg just about a week later said, "You're back." I said, okay, but that's that did happen, and I it, see he was upset because they were trying to get him on his show. Yeah, but again, I was you better. were too great for your I own was good. Better than the other one, so yeah. I got him on the air, and I believe that's why I got fired because I was making all the other shows look bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Have you ever missed a spinner for getting one of the greatest players of all time on the air? I've never heard that before. Well, if that is true, as you laid it out, that would be a rather odd way to be suspended. It know? was. It, could there maybe be a detail that's missing no, from the I'm story missing, somewhere? No, yeah, I'm not missing anything. But I love Klaibs. That just was... Could Bobby Orr perhaps have been scheduled later that day? No, on he, the wasn't, he show? wasn't scheduled. He, was, he said he trying to get him on the air. Well... I tried to, but it took me one call. Uh, the Loomster says, can we please get Klaibs on? No, I ain't going to get Klaibs on every time I bring it up. Oh. We did that last Viva time. La last time when I talked about getting fired and Klaibs came on. Then he was mad because I didn't go to his thing. He was on Frank's show. He goes, hell with him. <laughs> mm. 
How'd Bobby Orr take it? Be now mixed he, up in the middle of all this. But now I feel bad because Clay's invited me to his. Um, I guess it's the. What Hall of Fame is he going into next? He was just he Doug. Was, what Hall of Fame? He was just inducted in it. Or he's, I don't know. He, St. Louis Media Hall of Fame. Could maybe? be, but it's in the Ozarks. <clears throat> The Ozarks. Yeah, the, the ceremony's in the Ozarks. And he says, you're invited to this one. I said, cool, I'll be there. Where is he? Because the Ozarks. Said, I'm not driving to the Ozarks. No, he can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him that at the end of your rewards, awards. I said, seriously, I can't go there. I'm not going to drive the Ozarks for this. No. No. But Glaves is a great guy. But <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we not had, so great that you're going to drive we, three hours. We did have our differences at 590. Call Claves. No way that happened. That's from the 217. Is that Quincy's at Springfield? I don't know. Champagne or Bonnie? I just don't. Yeah, that's up in the uh, Macomb area, I believe. Sometimes I just tip my cap. Holy ass. He's told this story 50 times. Whatever you do, don't ask questions. Tim, you asked, so this one's on you. <laughs> that's from Malago Tequila Listener of the Year, Chairman Steve. And oh, he's in Wild. I remember I told the story it 50, once or twice. If I told it 50, 50 times... Tim went and asked, and Doug said, I think you've told it once. So if I told it 50 times, they would have yeah. remembered. I just forget some of the details. Making things up. Yeah. And we have new listeners every day, so that was new to some it people. It's a nice story. To be too good for your job. Guys, I love it when Klaibs came in and said, I, quote, I'm so sorry that everyone makes life so hard for Iggy. It was beautiful sarcasm. That's from Nate in Tallahassee, Doug. And, uh, I don't remember a that. Friend of the show. Is this guy effing serious? That's from Johnny Johnson. Mm -hmm. Down in Springfield. I'm very serious. What do you, what do you think I'm not serious about? Uh, Johnny, call in 636-9004. TMA, Callier and Thompson phone lines. Uh, that's how you can get involved in the program. Or you can just email in and compete against Blueberry Pop Pop, who has won eight of the first ten Design Air Heating and Cooling Email the Day competitions in the month of March. Design Air is online at designairservice.com. That's Seth Goldcamp and his staff. That's four generations. That's no upselling. That's fixing it and taking care of business and moving on. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling online at designairservice.com. Official HVAC provider of TMA and the Tim McKernan Show. Doug is a client. I am a client, and we are very happy to be clients and working with someone we've known now for, I think, close to a decade in Seth Gold Camp. So if you run into any heating and cooling issues, all you do is you go to designairservice.com and work with the sponsor of the email of the day, and that's Design Air Heating and Cooling Online at designairservice.com. Jackson, what if I want to place a wager on Ludwig this weekend? Because as I told you, he's winning this thing. Doug, he's winning this is thing. Is he really? Yeah, Ludwig he season. He has no flaw in his game. Where are you going? <laughs> We're in the middle of a radio show here. Jackson's going to talk about gambling. I'm going to grab a quick coffee. I am going to talk about Camlin. And Nikki just... <laughs> You're here the one out of line. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, and uh, while Aberg may have, has no flaws in his game. Did you no. say Aberg or Aberg? I don't so say tough. either one. Bobby Aberg? There's so many different pronunciations on it. It's so tough because he's got a little. It's not an umlaut, but there's like some kind of dot over one of the letters in the his Saints name. Saints quarterback is now on the PGA tour. Yeah, no flaw in his game. Drew Brees. Nice. Um, there's also multiple pronunciations of circa. Not really, but one time KG pronounced it circa. Circa. But unfortunately, uh, from fortunately for KG, it is pronounced circa. But fortunately for you, it is available in the great state of Illinois. So if you live here in St. Louis, Missouri, you make the short drive across the river, or if you already live in Illinois, you sign up for the Circa Sports app because the Circa Sports app is sports betting the way it should be with big app bets, high betting limits, tight money line splits, and the best customer service around. They're always out there looking for those tight money line splits, getting you the most money possible on your action. There's plenty of action to be had. Once the big dance gets underway, we'll find out the brackets on Sunday. You can start filling out your brackets, but more importantly, you can take a look at some of those matchups. Maybe you like the over and the under in one of the games. Maybe you like a big upset coming. You know you're going to be watching with your friends, hanging out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, watching basketball. What better way to do it than with some action from the Circa Sports app, which is now available in Illinois. Visit CircaSports.com for more details and get ready to start betting like a pro. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. 2060 Digital, making digital connections that drive results. 
in the fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience, challenging for any business. 2060 Digital uh, is where you can go. We're actually thinking of working with uh, 2060 Digital, digital with, uh, with Sound Story, as a matter of fact. Uh, it is a, a company that is under the Hubbard umbrella. 2060 Digital with 12 years of expertise specializing in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing and demystifying the process, transform from a challenge into an opportunity, enhance online presence, optimize digital campaigns, and increase customer engagement. I uh, think your business has room to grow. Let them prove it to you at 2060 Digital. Visit 1057thepoint.com slash 2060 Digital and take the first steps toward unlocking your business's digital potential with 2060 Digital. And that reminds me, um, I talked about this on the Tim McKernan Show podcast, and I want to open it up to the TMA audience. And I know some people have emailed. Uh, we are just going to filter through uh, and, and do three of these sound stories. So here is what we're doing. Doug, this is a, a new um, category, okay. element of sound story. All I don't right. know. Um, we are now going, we already have added the video feature. Um, but what we're going to do is now take people's uh, images, digitize them, videos, digitize them, especially if they're old VHS um, or older videos from film even, and digitize them. And therefore, since you have done probably at this point, I don't know, what do you think, 75, 100 sound stories, somewhere in there? Yeah, no, close to it, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, we now will be able to produce essentially life documentaries for people. It'll still be the, under the umbrella of sound story. Uh, and what we're going to do is give three away um, to uh, audience members. Uh, it's not a competition. It's not a raffle. But the key thing is, is it will be, uh, you will need to provide, obviously, the videos and the uh, images, and you'll get it for free. Uh, and then we will then be able to produce them and then, and then show the public what the product is. So if you are interested in this, email me at tmckernan at insidestl.com. And there is a uh, simple form that the great Peter Rep, our general manager at Sound Story, has put together. And, uh, and we will be shooting those, and we are getting a different studio uh, to do these for, uh, do these projects in. And uh, so if you would like a, I mean, you can say it's a free Sound Story, and I guess it is, but it also is, uh, it's a new version of Sound Story. So kind of like a life documentary, except for private citizens, as opposed to... Uh, you know, the ones for public millionaires, figures. billionaires, yeah. public figures, exactly right. So, anyway, uh, email me. My email address is tmckernan at insidestl.com, and then I'll send you the form that Peter uh, created, uh, I guess, uh, last week. And uh, and there it'll be. So, there you go. Just a brief aside, Doug. That's just a brief aside. What a great keepsake that would be, yeah. to have a little Life video documentary. documentary of your parents, grandparents, right. or whoever else you'd like. With the images of the, you know, I mean, I'm sure we all have pictures from way back when and, uh, and and to digitize them and then all the videos and images that you have saved on your phone uh, we'll take those and then edit the project together for you so uh, anyway that is uh, another iteration uh, for another chapter of sound story and if you are interested in that uh, email me tmckernan at insidestl.com email this program at uh, the morning after at insidestl.com call into the program Callie and Thompson phone line 636-9004 TMA and you are welcome to text into the Jeff Lottman Compass Realty text inbox 314-881-TMA5 is how you can uh, get involved on this program. Uh, let's see. On the broadcast, Doug, they say Oberg. That's from Lee Norwood. Okay. Hmm. Oh, Lee Norwood texted in, did he? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I yeah. guess we should say Oberg. Yeah, they do say Oberg. Okay. But I've also lie. heard Ober. Yeah, and Ober, I've heard. COD, that kid? K-O-D, that kid? Is, that, is it D? I can't make I, I don't know what his last name I remember what his last name is. Cod? Is that what it is? Cod. I'm not familiar with him. Is it Cod? Cod? Is it? Is it? Is it's pronounced Coo? It's pronounced Coo? <laughs> Jeez, I feel I would hate to produce that show. Why? It'd probably oh be great God. fun. Are you kidding me? I would get the. I maybe I'm off the mark, but I would get the sense he would be he would be a rough guy to. 
Well, remember when he did his... For. I could be off the mark. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm incredibly entertained by the drops, but I just get this... Like, yeah, when, when he was yelling at the guys because he couldn't Dude, hear. his home studio during COVID, he was, like, berating and talking down on live camera to his producer. Mm-hmm. Remember, it would sound like a microwave sometimes. Yeah. It have, like, reverb, or he wouldn't be on. Oh, <laughs> the glory days, man. <laughs> Those were and I guess you could never talk back to him or you'd be out. Oh, God, he'd terrify it. Yeah. But he couldn't fire you in the middle of the show, or the show wouldn't continue, right? The show Pollock continue. got fired in the middle of the show. Though. Oh, you did. That's right. I finished out strong. Imagine having to leave your one-bedroom apartment that you're sharing with another buddy to drive out to Long Island or whatever, just mm. a gorgeous estate, and then get berated by the guy who owns <laughs> the estate. But at least you're in show business. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be a tough one to hold your tongue. Uh, Jackson, you know? yeah, one of the links you sent yesterday was, I forgave my wife for her secret online sex life. Now she's done something worse. I went to read the story, but I needed to log in. Is there something that I... Oh, really? So, I, obviously, you have read it, but I... This but I might be, it might be one of those sites where you get, like, a certain amount Slate. of... Slate.com, Doug. Okay. You get, like, a well, certain... I haven't read anything on Slate this month. New York Times is like that. You get, like, five free ones and you got to pay. Doug, do you call that the gray lady? <laughs> That's what it's called, yeah. <laughs> the gray All dude. the news, it's fit to print. Yep, I, like I just got hit with it. Damn. All right, my bad. Now you can't call it up. You hit your limit. Yeah. That's that's dumb. We just tease a story we can't read? Well, they, they want me to pay for it. That ain't happening. Come on, Berkey! It's on me. It's, there's no one else. Loosen your purse strings. There's no one else to, yeah. to, to look at but me here. This is my oh. bad. Tell me, okay. Jackson's going to be lethal at 40. Jackson, you think you'll still be in this business in 40? No, it depends on it moving depends parts there. To say definitively would be kind of tough. Yeah, well, I just say you're doing it. Yeah, I mean, well, it was just, it wasn't, I mean, we're not looking for you to <laughs> sign a 16 year deal here. I'm just looking, like, what do you think? Because Doug's, Doug, like, really wants to get, you when he said 80? Really I want to do this to 100. <laughs> Which is good. I want to be 100 years old. We got a lot of ideas. We're not even halfway through yeah. your career yet. I have so many takes. We're going to milk you dry, so many, man. So, so many takes. Takes still on the shelf. Every day will be a sound story for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of things I'm passionate about and like to talk about. So, yeah, I think I would like to be. There you go. What, what about now? Most people in this industry, if you start out as a producer, um, I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to know where this story is going to go. No, I, I think I said this the other day on the cooking show when I was chatting with people. Um, I said the reason that I've never... I had chances to become uh, a program director, an assistant sure. program director. General manager, probably? No, not that high. But I never want to be a person that's going to fire somebody. So I never took a managerial job in radio because I don't want to have to fire people. Mm-hmm. Would that, that would be is hard. That, is yeah. that something that you want to do? Maybe later get into like the management portion of it. You're asking me yeah. Uh, if yeah to ask me right now. No, I'd rather you know espouse my opinion. However, things can change, and I, and I like I hear what you're saying with firing, but it's it, it can never be personal. You know, it's just no. I just, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, I just don't. We got a long, young little John Kioski back there. We it really do. Like. Sounds like he's going to become the next big guy. He's ready to hand out I the like pink that. slips. Yeah, whether it was, you know, because they were bad at their job or they did something or it was just a budget cut. I Scheduled just don't, Bobby Orr or something yeah, like that. I just, <laughs> I just don't want to be the guy. i got to say, by the way, you're, i got I to fire you. Now he's got no job. He goes home. He's probably got a family to take care of. He has no job. I just don't want to be that person. Yeah, Right. But I mean, I it's not like you have, like, unilateral power. You know, it's not like it's coming just from one person. For like a grudge reason, you know, it's that's just part of you know, work and whatever business. I hear you though, Iggy. I, I don't think I could be a high school coach at anything either and, and cut kids off teams. I yeah. just don't think I'd have the heart to do it. I remember how they would do it when they called your home phone because there are no cell phones. It's like a kid when you would try out, yeah, and the coach would call, and that's when you find out. Yeah, so it wasn't like posted the coach on the would call board. to cu cut you. Yeah, they didn't really? want to part. This was it's young. Personal. <laughs> wow. So it would be, they felt like it would be more awkward if they posted the big, you know, the roster in the locker mm -hmm. room with all the kids looking at it. So they felt calling individuals one on one. But they did. They called it and said you made it too. So every, like, the coach called every child, whether he made it or not, and then gave the news that way. I feel like it'd actually kind of be harder at like a freshman or JV level where you probably have a bunch more kids. 
at similar skill levels. Like with varsity, you kind of know who's going to be on the team. Even I think I'm with Jackson. Out. If you're trying out and you don't know, it's like... But there's always a couple there on the bubble there at the end. Sure, sure, sure. But I feel like that's more apparent in some of the younger freshman JV. Like my freshman basketball tryout had like 25 kids. so they had to. But it's such a heartbreaking like, thing to get cut at a young age from anything. To be told yeah. at some point in your life, 100%. you're just not good enough. Oh, all your friends that are doing this sport? Yeah. You ain't doing it. Oh, it's a life changer, yeah. That's brutal. It's traumatic. Yeah. I, I don't want to be the guy to do that. All right, everybody make I a team. Do that. I couldn't but do would it. you play everybody? Okay, you get everybody on the roster. That I would try. I would try hard okay. to do that. Try very hard, even if just a little <laughs> bit, just a little to make everybody feel like they're part of the team. Yeah. If you're up 10, 15, or down, you know, hopeless, get them in the game somehow. Pinch, pinch, run them. Put them on a special team somewhere. Let them go into play defense. Run around on a press for a couple. It's something to get as many people involved as possible. Don't they do that in some? Baseball leagues, depending on the age that everybody's going to play. Oh, yeah. Pitch limits. Yeah. Age, and that's how it should be, it, man. It's supposed to be fun. Youth sports, yeah. Everybody's supposed to play, sure. But I'm talking now, like, high school. Like, at the varsity level. Yeah, the world at the Little League World Series. Don't all those guys got to play? Get into a game at some point? I th- again, that's youth sports. That's I think so. Saying, but yeah. Back when I played youth sports, I mean, we had guys that never got off the bench. I know. We had nine guys played. It was regular major league rules. And there were some guys that just <laughs> didn't play at all, and we yeah. didn't think anything of it. Yeah, it was Corey League. I said, I said, I asked, it was Bill Booze was our coach. Boozers, losers, we called ourselves. Look at that kid that never played. And I went up to Coach Booze. I said, can you put him in the game? He hasn't played all year. He just sits there because we're trying to win. I go, we're down like 18 to 1. Oh. I said, just let him pinch it for me. Let the kid play. Yeah. Ah, he'll embarrass himself. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I, never I got into a game. I don't know how you write a check to somebody so your kid can play and then watch him never play. Well, if, we, didn't write, you, we didn't write checks back then. Well, you paid. Somebody paid. You no, didn't play C- for free. It was CYC ball. And I think you was, still play. I think it was part of our no, you pay tuition for that. at Magdalene. Oh, well, they pay now. Well, maybe my parents did. I, don't know. I think any sport, if you have to pay to play, you've you've bought your way into some playing time. I think at that age, everybody should play. Everybody, if you make everybody should get in the game. Sure. Well, nowadays they do. I think in in little league baseball, here you just bat the roster. I think. Yeah. At least that's the way it was when I was coaching it. Everybody batted. Doug, it's not easy to let another guy down when you don't really want to sleep with his wife. It's from the Swinghaven board member. <clears throat> Moving on to another subject now. It's not always letting someone down if you don't want to sleep with his wife. I'm going to read it again. Okay. This was sent at 7.43, which is this exact moment. Okay. Doug, it's not easy to let another guy down when you don't really want to sleep with his wife. Swinghaven board member. Would you have to tell him that? Yeah. I wish I'd have been honest a few years ago. So every time you have a friend and you don't want to sleep with his wife, you got to tell him that? <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> that went into a lot of friendships, wouldn't it? How would, you, how would you take that if all your friends came up and told you that? Huh, that's a conversation best not had. I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't know what the scenario is there. No. It, it seemed like it was a non sequitur, but I felt like it needed to yeah. be read. Yeah, like you just go golfing with a guy, and when it's over, you sit him down and say, listen, it was a nice seven iron you hit, but I don't want to sleep with your wife. And then you go home after that, I guess. <laughs> what a scenario. Uh, Orson Wadwaco says, Doug, there are winners and losers in sports. If you suck, you don't play. That was my motto as a CYC mm. coach. That's the worst. Yeah, it's a bad motto. And you get to a level where, yeah, if you suck, you don't play, but not at the not at the youth grade school level. That's not it, because kids changed so much back then. I had kids on my little league team when they were, you know, second and third graders. I thought this guy's got no talent at all. And then a couple of them, by the time they were fifth and sixth graders, some of the best players on the team. You guys hang out in the garage next to the beer fridge and talk about what kids are cutting. <laughs> <laughs> there are some who do that. It's like that with the Cardinals. select sports. There are definitely oh, yeah. some who do that. It's I'm like that with the Cardinals. I mean, I'm sure they'll let Carpenter bat a few times just to get him in there. Oh, yeah. He's contractually obligated to at least strike out 50 times. This uh, that's kind of a different thing. 
Yeah, I was, I, I was doing a bit there. It didn't work. Oh, I, ca- I got yeah. cut a couple times, and I, I, I'm better for it. You are? What did you get cut from? I think sixth grade basketball. Sixth grade basketball you got cut? Yeah. After putting up all those points on Livingston? I think it was sixth or seventh. It was seventh because then I made the eighth grade team. I think it was seventh, not sixth. My apologies. Oh. Coach did not like me. I was not a fan. He was a teacher of mine a couple of years prior, and yeah. I was a very bad student. You caused so. trouble for him. Might have been the case, yeah. And understized, Doug. Obviously, in seventh grade, you want all bigs. <laughs> well, you don't want kids that are going to give you trouble, that's for sure. That's, I, I get it. As a coach, you wouldn't want to coach troublemakers. But I'm a locker either. room glue guy. Oh, are you? Yeah. He didn't Mace, realize that. Mace Dog and Matty Dreads on that team. Yeah, I yeah. used to play the kids with the hottest moms. Doug, is that a coaching strategy? That's from Jackson's mm. Five Hole. I think you just there get is them. No on, secret plan. You just get them on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's more <laughs> playing time. Well, that'd be a tough decision though if you're the coach and the moms and they'll sleep with you if you play them. I mean, you got to play. Does that go it. on a lot? You got to play don't the kid, think right? It does, you know, no. I don't think what it do does. What do you think happened? Tough. What happens more often? Do you think Stephen Wildwood, who is the Monaco Tequila Listener of the Year in 2023, said? Uh, the dads on the down low at soccer practices, or a situation in which coaches are sleeping with moms of the kids who aren't as good, so they get playing time. What do you think happens? <laughs> probably the more? second one probably is more likely <laughs> than dads hooking up at soccer practice. Who had the first kid? You know, I told you about the dude that uh, the kid. Uh, he's obviously very successful now, but his family was very well off, and he wasn't a good player. But he bought the whole team. Brand new warm up jersey. He's in. And he, ah, and he started he's the, in. La- like yep. the next three or four games. And it's like, God, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is so dumb. Hmm. They were sick warm up with the tearaway, though. So I was yeah. happy. Yeah. The decision you have to make, the hard one is do you reward the kids who really try their hardest, work at it, practice, and become the best players to reward them with all the playing time? Or do you punish the kid who just doesn't athletically have the same talent and never let him never let him in you make those kids team captains so they go out to the <laughs> coin tosses you know it's, but it's hard to find that. that it's hard to find that balance it depends on the coach there's some coaches that just want to win at all costs they're not yeah. going to play and there's some coaches that you just want to have the kids have some fun and let everybody play it's dependent who on who had the first kid <laughs> it's, it's so dependent on what level you're at like once you get to varsity sports yeah then it's, it's about winning. Well, yeah, yeah it's it's, winning yeah. we're talking more like little league and oh then you yeah. gotta let the kids develop if you uh, you have no idea what their potential could be when yeah. they're that young you have to let them play mm-hmm. i like cookies yeah me too <laughs> I love the post-game I post do like game cookies. Snacks. I really like cookies. <laughs> I love the post-game snacks. We go to McDonald's and get ourselves a cone after a game. Yeah. And I was terrible, so I didn't even get to at bat. I'm one of those guys that, like, didn't need to shower or could just fold my uniform. They didn't let you bat? I, I mean, I struck out a bunch. Baseball was not my strong suit. I'm kind of scared of the baseball. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of baseball, man. Well, as skinny as you were, if you got hit by a pitch, that you might die. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that as well. You. I tell you, there was right nothing. There's nothing better than playing little league and Corey league ball, and you know, you know, you got a game that night. You come home from school, you put on your uniform, you get on your bike, drive up to Brentwood Park after the game, you stop at Carl's to get a root beer, and you get so sad if it rained, and you're, you give it to the field, and sorry, can't play it. Oh, I remember that. That was one of the worst feelings you could have. Game rained out. We didn't have that many games then. Yeah. I remember playing a whole summer. You get twelve games. <laughs> There's kids who play that in two weeks now. Twelve games for the whole year, and then by the end of June, it was over. We're sitting there for two months of the summer with nothing to do. I always had something to do, but well, no baseball to, anyway. Gonna, well, yeah, I got on the Mark Twain play Indian ball. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Native American ball. Thank you. Yeah, that kind of. You always find something to do. Well, I mean, I did something, but what I wanted to do was play baseball games. Looks like they're doing a little reverse that you might see in football. The Phoenix Rams with the D. Oh, oh, what they're gonna do? He's shooting the roof, Daddy. Oh, look at that! Look at this! Look at that! Mm. We didn't have any dads. That is the drop of the year. We don't even need to (laughs) vote. (laughs) Boy, we just mailing it in today, huh, guys? Babe Truth is not happy with the show. Doug, the listeners just are not. Happy. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is. I think show. there's been some good good topics today. <laughs> like, this is a kid that never played sports because he sucked. So Same truth? Yeah, so we talk about youth sports and he doesn't like it. 
Uh, big old fan says BSU, and then he uses a five-letter word for cat or kitten. You play to win the game. I don't care if little Jimmy is upset because he isn't playing. It's six U T ball. We are here to win. That's from big old fan. <laughs> T ball. Yeah, yeah. If you're if you're taking T ball seriously, mm-hmm. you must have never seen a T ball game before. There are a few out there that will take it all seriously at, at any level. <laughs> I mean, there's some TikTok videos out there of kids playing T ball. <laughs> I love and they start running the wrong way, and they start running into the outfield, and the coach is pointing him to second base. Mm-hmm. He gets on second base, runs around the mound of home plate. I mean, it's just hilarious to watch these kids. I love my uncle to death, and I'm, I have four uncles, so I'm not going to say which one, because randomly they may listen. He was hammered every one of my cousin's games. Oh, no. As he coach? Was, no, he was more of a very active fan, and it would get kicked out. And then he would be the guy that would have, like, a cooler. He would carry a little cooler every game. I'm talking these are, like, little league games, by the way. And just stand in the outfield. And just hammer beers. That's a good still, look. Yeah, That's it, a good look. It was so Hoosier. Loved the guy. But holy mother, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you were embarrassed as a kid? I mean, no, my really? uncle. So I had relations. Yeah. Well, I couldn't imagine being my cousin out there on the field, which is your dad is trash at 2 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bad look. Can I bring this up real quick? We were talking about producing earlier, and producing is a lot. Back in my day, it was more like getting guests. Um, so you would you would send out requests, and most of them were <clears throat> either yes or they can't do it and tell you why. You know, I'm trying to get this interview with Stevie Nicks for me and learn. Um, this isn't a hijacking. <laughs> um <laughs> Mainly for Learn, because Learn was supposed to interview her once, and Stevie Nicks didn't call. Um, <clears throat> so I'm trying to get this interview with Stevie for me and Learn. So I find the person that handles her stuff. A friend of mine at Live Nation said, this is who we went through last year. So I, this long, drawn-out email about how I met her, how many times I've met her, how many uh, times I've interviewed her. I mentioned Thai Babylonia, you know, all this stuff about... I said I was friends with Liz Rosenberg and Howard Kaufman forever, um, who who, rep, <laughs> who repped her for like, the who repped her for like forty years. Uh, Howard Kaufman passed away about five years ago, and Liz Rosenberg retired. So I said, so I'm not really sure who to go to. Hopefully, you can help me. It was like three paragraphs, all the information we need. That email, I got a response in two minutes. Thanks, she's not available. Did you put any effort into it? You didn't even call her. That's what I don't like, when they just automatically say, thanks, not available. Maybe her schedule is booked, though. I said we can do it any time. We can either sit down with her when she gets to town, or we can do it over the phone any time in the next six weeks leading to the show. You're really hot about this. Not available. Well, I put effort into sending this email. She goes, let me check. Let me see what her schedule In yeah. In one minute, one and a half minutes, I get a response. Sorry, not available. That was it. Not, oh, Kenny, thank you for the email. It was so thoughtful of you. Uh, let me check with Stevie. No, thanks. Not available. Man, you're hopping mad about this. Well, I'm a little upset that... I know she's busy, but, man, at least put some... You know, maybe make a call. At least you could get it off your chest in this forum. Steve, <laughs> Stevie, do you remember, do you remember Kenny? He's friends right. with Ty Babylonia. You met him. I guarantee you say, oh, I remember him. Because mm-hmm. she remembered Ty Babylonia. And that's how I met her. But didn't even put any of that through her. Just, thanks, not available. Yeah. Okay. So it upset me a little bit. Yeah. I just want to get that out there. Well, so there was, was there, important. So it looks like there'll be no interview with Stevie Nicks. For Learn. Yeah. Well, I'd have been there too, but... No. Oh. Mm. Okay. But this concert thing, is that still a thing where people can try to win a ticket with you to go no, see you Stevie No, you can't. Nicks? You can no longer register. It's a thing. It's going to happen, but the registration's over. Oh. Okay. I think there was like 1,500 people registered. What lucky female can get involved in... In herself? I don't know. Jesse's picking the names. So. Three people get to go or one? Two. Two go with you. And I'm taking somebody, so let me... Yeah, the naughty, naughty little girl. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to take, Playa? I don't know. It's not for another two months. Oh, Okay. Well, I'm on pins and needles waiting yeah. to see the guest list. I think we're all upset now with this email reply. <laughs> It'll probably be some licks. No, that would be fun. 
Well, I can't put the kibosh on it. You cannot. It's, you a, it's, a, cannot. it's a random pick, so if it's somebody I don't want to go with, I'm still going to have to go. It's not going to be a very nice night for them, but... You're going to ruin it for them? No. I'm sure I won't talk very much if it's somebody I don't like. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, Doug Jason Falzone says, I can't believe this. These latest comments about being thoughtful and courteous to take time to respond to someone is so lost on him. That's from Jason, do you say Falzone or mm. Falzoni? Remember Carmen, Fal Carmen Fanzone, the Cubs third baseman years ago? That's him. He's it could emailing. well be. Carmen Fanzone. Yeah. Iggy, do you feel like Jason makes a point? Oh, if, if it's what I think he's talking about. Yeah, he's tying that into you're not responding to a text. But he's mad that oh, they responded too out. quickly. <laughs> no, it's just stupid. I mean, even the thing, I, I responded to the first text. Yeah. And the second text really didn't need a response because no. there wasn't a question. It was just, mm -hmm. sorry, I can't help you. One of us said, okay, thank you. Yeah. I said, that, I <laughs> okay. said that the first time. But it's not that I didn't want to text her. I didn't see it. And oh, I told you, I went we back I went back three times and all, right? all of her texts is to me. And there's three times she didn't respond to me. So, yeah. you know. Frank Cusimona. I never got pissed off. <laughs> But it has that to do. You're saying I didn't respond. She responded in, in yeah, a minute. She did. Yeah. With a big no. Yeah, she did say thanks. Not re not not available. Hi, maybe Paul. I don't know. Maybe I want you to start seeing Coach Eli Drinkwitz as a young Coach Nick Saban. <laughs> now maybe Stevie told her for the tour. You know, I'm not doing any interviews throughout this tour. That could have been Talk it. And, back. Then she, yeah. and she said thanks. Yeah, we don't care about this. Well, are you we back don't to football? care. Because you miss it, or are you coming back to football because oh. you just had a big failure in broadcasting? Oh, a that big a... star said, no, <laughs> sorry, I'm not doing any interviews, and I'm sure it happens all the time, <laughs> all over the country. Falzone seems to care. He brought it up. Well, there are a lot of people who do care, but the, it's just basically stop. Yeah, okay. But Falzone had a different approach. Well, a lot of people wanted me to get this interview. So I'm just <laughs> What of the interview? Who? 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 I'm just giving you an update. There are superstars and <laughs> politicians and athletes and movie stars all over the country bombarded with interview requests from radio stations, and <laughs> podcasts, and newspaper all over the place. I'm sure they have a stock reply unless they really intimately know the other person. Sorry, not available. Well, it could have been different if she would have said, "Do you remember Kenny Strode? He was." She didn't. Apollonia. She didn't. I know she didn't. That's the reason I put it all in there. I thought she would at least run it by her. Why did I get an interview in 94 with her when she was more popular in 94 and she is now and was asked backstage and was the only one that got backstage? 30 years now, ago. 30 years. So? She probably so is. You think she remembers you? Probably. Oh, come on. That is an absolute <laughs> disgrace. Yeah. <laughs> You remember everyone you ever ran into 30 years ago? <laughs> Briefly. Had a, a brief moment of, hi, how you doing? Yeah, good to see you. They're stars. But <laughs> she was a star and you weren't. I just want to get it out there. Women wanted to be like him <laughs> and guys wanted to be with him. <laughs> oh, because so many people are clamoring for this interview. Almost well, demanding it. Well, Ty Babylone is one of her good friends. So and I'm what? sure that nobody's ever brought up that name before. Oh, when she hears Ty Babylonia, oh, yeah, I remember him. Ty introduced me to him. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Put that on Pepper and Genie. Okay, that's enough! <laughs> oh. That's it. Just a little update. So if it's Stevie is listening, we're still interested in the interview. Yeah. I wouldn't let this gnaw at you. <laughs> no. I, I've been told, no, I won't do an interview about 10,000 times in my life. But did they put a little effort into it? Was it a minute and a half after you asked the request, said no, six weeks? No, no usually it's right to my face. No, <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's the way it works. <laughs> well, I've had that before, yep. right? Chris Berman did that to me. Just... Chris Berman's taking shrap on that. <laughs> yep. But it was in person. He, was, he happened to be there. Do you got time to walk across the street? Yeah, most of mine that's, were in person, too. Hey, can we get a couple of minutes? No. I didn't okay, say, sorry, is Stevie sir. available in the next two minutes? I want to interview her. <sighs> and I'm not mad at the Okay, let's get past this. <laughs> just, let's move on past this. She's just doing her job. Oh. Oh. 
Yeah. How about that rain? What's on your mind, Doug? Oh, well, just... it's a perfect time to wrap up the 7 o'clock hour. Right. Doug, presented to you by Munganass, St. Louis Acura, and Munganass, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota. We have the drops of the week coming up in the 8 o'clock hour. And then we have the design air heating and cooling email of the day coming up in the Schaefer Door Company. 9 o'clock hour, and then Jackson and I will go down the hallway at 10 o'clock, and we will be fine. Don't worry about it. Jackson, tell them uh, what you have, because this is, this is kind of be, this is going to be a little different here today. Yeah, that's right. Very different. Will Pills Friday Six Shooter. Now, what does that mean? You, haven't, you have nothing? What? No. You load up the chamber with six hot questions, oh. and I go pop, 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 and yep. fire them off. In a rat-a-tat-tat style that's delivery? Right. Uh, if I can find my place in the email, yeah. Sometimes I lose my place. Well, could you print it out maybe? Have nah. a hard copy? A waste of paper. Okay. Tree hugger. That's right. Doug, that's what's coming up here for the next okay. three hours on the program. Uh, it's been uh, laid out for you. This is TMA presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15 minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like the steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. Chow Chow on the Hill is your one-stop shop for all your pet supplies. As soon as you walk through their doors, you and your pet are considered family and treated with superior service and personalized attention. Jessica is the owner and is a certified pet nutritionist and impassioned about educating her clients on the product that will keep your pets happy and healthy. My favorite part about Chow Chow is its connection with All Paws Safe Haven, an organization that helps shelter animals find forever homes. To learn more about Chow Chow, visit CIAOCHOWSTL.com or Stop by and tell them Plowsy sent you. John, I'm so tired of this kitchen. We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s and the rest of it. Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Woo! Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is the company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier & Thompson. Office? Collier & Thompson. Bar? You got it. Collier & Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier & Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Collier & Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Collier & Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CollierAndThompson.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here right now with James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. I made the switch to start working with you, James. It couldn't have been easier to make that switch to start saving money. Well, I appreciate that, Tim, and we appreciate your business. Uh, yeah, this is the time to save money. My, my goodness, we're all feeling it at the grocery store, at the gas pump, etc. So if you've noticed that your insurance rate has gone up, I want to stress how easy it is to get a proposal from us by going online at carltoninsurance.net. Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency online at Carlton Insurance. Dot net. This is the one. Honey, I think you're right. 
This house has everything we've ever dreamed of. A huge master bedroom, an open kitchen, and a backyard with a fire pit and built-in grill. I'm in love. I can't believe it. Finally, our dream home. It's absolutely perfect for us. We owe our realtor big time. No, you don't. We're just doing our job. At the Jeff Lottman Group, helping you find your dream home is our top priority, bringing people and properties together. To get started, call us at 314-406-8911 or visit us online at jefflottman.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with a great TMA sponsor, and that is Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. And you may hear a bunch of -of out-of-state law firms advertising here and there, all over on billboards and so on and so forth. But the thing is... Oftentimes, their goal is to just settle and move on, and that's not what you guys do. Yeah, this is C.D. Longo, and you hear us talking a lot about maximizing the value of cases, but what does that actually mean? Well, as Tim said, there's lots of personal injury lawyers in St. Louis, and everyone handles cases differently. We focus on getting the highest dollar amount for your injuries, not just getting a resolution quickly. We're constantly tracking all the settlements and verdicts in the area. This helps us advise our clients on whether a settlement offer is too low. And if the amount of compensation being offered is too low, we are happy to file lawsuits and proceed to trial to ensure our clients receive an amount that is fair. Visit our website or Google us at Longo Biggs in your law. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA May Listener of the Month. Get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro. In the morning after on KPNT HD2. And as moist as a freshly baked Betty Crocker cake. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. KPNT FM HD2. Collinsville, St. Louis. Doug, you wanted it? You got it. Happy Mother's Day. First of all, you need to get the mic closer to your mouth. I have no so idea what the their words. audio situation was. Where were they? In a silo? Like, it literally sounded like metal with their background. Perhaps it wasn't like a, a major band production. <laughs> like it could have just been one guy in the basement. I like the cock that just kind of creeps in, does a couple I, things I, on the I, mic. Is that cock? Yeah. He's oh, like, like oh, she does your laundry? Oh, yeah. Remember, <laughs> he always chimes in with little funny things. <laughs> but he's a cuckold. Because it, it seems like he's just sitting there in the background with no instrument or anything, just kind of watching his buddy play guitar. Oh, well, the guitar playing was okay, but the singing was lousy. The song was horrendous. <laughs> Recording went god awful. Yeah. Other than that, mm-hmm. 
Uh, you're welcome to give your thoughts. 314-881-TMA5. Jeff Lotman, Compass Realty, text inbox. You're also welcome to email in. For our design air, heating and cooling email of the day, the morning after at InsideSCL.com. And, of course, call in the Callier and Thompson phone line, 636-9004-TMA. And be a friend of the feather. It's the morning after. It's presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. And it is Friday. It's 810 in St. Louis. And that means it's time for our drops of ps the week. Woot. Morning after. Drops of the week. Yeah, you gotta drop it like a hot dog. It's a wonderful drop. Indeed it is. Clip that off. Clip that off. Clip that off. All right, 6 o'clock, Motel 6. I haven't seen you there, maybe. I think you've seen Drew Swing's ween already, right? Yeah. Oh. I could sit there and watch a Drake in Indiana. No, but you could watch porn all night. One of the guys you work with has a problem with urinating in our toilets. <laughs> I mean, the term is so bad. I mean, you would hit it and, like, jerk. Mm. Let him have it. Best I'm rule. actually interested to see an all top four. The new man. Fan page, fan page, fan page, fan page, fan Have you ever had your cervix stretched, fella? Wreck me, Doug. I feel like a man now. Yeah. Is your wife still looking to trip? Yeah, she's down for a good trip. Yeah. I've never fallen asleep during this show. Iggy, would you actually trade Acuna for a naked picture? I want 15 guys to come line up my pool and I'm going to service all of them. I'm losing a signal. I got to go. You know, the outcome scripted. I know what I'm going to lose. I know I'm going to win. No kidding. Huh? I'm sorry. We know what we have in Tyler O'Neill. Like, th those guys are... Tyler O'Neill's not on the team anymore. Oh, he's not? Oh, nice. <laughs> he traded to Boston. It's better. Nice. That was drops of the week. Ooh, that one's good. I like that. <laughs> Wonderful mm. drops of the week. Good job, Jack. Here, uh, Jackson, that was your production. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, the Drops of the Week every Friday here on the program, and uh, we welcome you to uh, partake in the fun and games. Texting and calling in or emailing in, transform your story at Illinois Recovery Center. At Illinois Recovery Center, the team believes in the strength of every individual's journey to recovery. Whether you're taking the first step or continuing your path, the IRC's dedicated team is here to support you. So why choose Illinois Recovery Center? Holistic healing approach, expert care and guidance, safe and welcoming environment, tailored programs for lasting recovery, top-notch facility, and accommodation. Whether you've made the life-saving choice to seek help or on your own, or you want to be prepared for the other end of an addiction intervention with a loved one, the chance to learn about addiction recovery is available to you at the Illinois Recovery Center in Swansea. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Com. Uh, Doug, can you tell me about Schaefer Door Company, the sponsor of our 9 o'clock hour? Well, sure. They'll take good care of your garage door. I've got a garage door that makes a loud noise. It's clang, 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 clang. There goes the garage door. Wherever you are in the house, you can hear the garage door going up. You can hear the garage door going down. Ah, yes, garage door. And then when I'm around the, the neighbors and their garage doors, go ahead, heart barely makes a sound. So Is that right? I'm doing something wrong. It's a 26, 27-year-old garage door, so either I need a whole new one or I need it to, to be worked on by the Schaefer door people. They need to come out and grease it up real nice, like, or, or just, do, just do something to it. And that's what they do. That's what they specialize in taking care of problems with your garage door. Here's the, the, the way you spell the company, because there's some confusion about that. It's S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R, Schaefer door. And the, the best is to call or text them. Here's the number, 636-782-3600. Oh, wait. They have fast response times. They got a crew standing by just on Monday morning in case something happens over the weekend because it tends to be that's when it happens. Something happens over the weekend. Monday morning rolls around. Oh, can't get out of the garage. Can't get into the garage. Schaefer Door's got people right there ready to hustle out and get you taken care of. The business has multiple family members that have worked there for many, many years. No job is too big for them. No job too small. Anytime you call, there'll be a person right there that can help you out. And service techs, not commission-based. They're not going to try to sell you something you don't need. They just want to get you working and um, i'm going to have them out to my house and see if we can get my garage door to stop making such obnoxious noises that's what uh, schaefer door company specializes in good company to know good uh, phone to put in your contact list because when you have garage door problems mister you've got a real issue here's a number again 636-782-3608 for schaefer door company that's schaeferdoor.com schaefer door is a co-play master authorized dealer there it is uh doug uh, last night uh on the nba and tnt crew we're talking about have you been listening to beyonce's new country I, I have not i heard she covered a song from dolly parton jackson uh, I only heard it through this clip. 
Okay, take a listen. Uh-huh. After going 33 for B3. I wasn't shooting it. That was a foul, wasn't it? I wouldn't have been shooting. I told you, if I ain't by myself, I ain't shooting. <laughs> Come on, Beyonce, say that thing. Woo, hold him, baby. You're a big, uh, you're a big uh, country music fan. I am. So you liking, you liking what I like Beyonce, but I found out another group. It's called War and Treaty. That doesn't okay. have anything to do with Beyonce. I know yeah. Beyonce. I'm waiting for the app, but that's it. I saw the Country Music Awards list. War, War and Treaty, my new favorite band, other than Dan and Shay. Other than, okay. Hey, it's American Express Halftime Report. Your source for all things that are country music. That's Ernie it. Johnson. War and Treaty. Shout out to O'Neal. Dan and Shay, too. Kenny the Jet Smith and Charles Barkley. I hate like a Kenny. at uh, the no, American Express. You were Express talking about Beyonce. Now you're talking yeah. about 18 other groups. But she's got a country album coming out. <laughs> It's out, isn't it? No. She's only released two songs so far. She's well, doing some of it's out. That's two songs, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> As I was saying about 20 minutes ago, American Express teammates. I didn't know you was part of the hive, Chuck. SGA with uh, 14. Jalen Williams got I see 15. you, boo-boo. I see you, boo-boo. <laughs> period. Hey, come on. Leave me alone, kitty. Kitty. Period. Kitty. I'm part of the hive. You're part of the kitty. SGA has not missed from the field. <laughs> For those who don't know what the kitty is, you don't need to. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You need to know what the meow, kitty is. Meow, I, meow. You do not need to know. <laughs> let that be, America, let that be an inside joke. <laughs> kitty, I'm part of the watch. Meow. Let that be an inside joke. Just I'm don't open that door. I'm come part on, of, Ernie. I'm part of Ernie. Come on, Ernie. <laughs> hey, I'm part of Behind. But you, hey, listen, come on, Ernie. Hey, kitty, calm down over there. <laughs> Kitty, Kitty the Jet. Let's go. Yes. So, oh, I thought you weren't running. Uh, I'm not running today. I'm, I'm not running. Just supposed to go first. Out. No, you said let's go. Ernie can't get control of that show, and I love that. I didn't about understand it. any of that. Uh oh. <laughs> I, I, I didn't that. get a lot of it. I love that crew, man. Yeah, they have fun, that's for sure. They are some of the best. Warren Tree Rules. They just did a song with Jackson's boy, Zach Bryan, too. That's from Mrs. Jenny Shanahan. Is he really my boy? I didn't know. I was about, that's, that's why I wanted to follow up on that. I didn't know that that was your guy. I sounded like two of his songs. Who is your boy? Ah, oh, so <laughs> many. Is that right? Killian. Killian Murphy. Oh, yeah, you do actor. like him. You know, my guy. But, yeah, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't. Consider Zach Bryan my guy. I think he's really talented, and I like a couple of his songs. Are you going to a show? No. No. no those sold out. What, uh, yeah, but you know people. Mm-hmm. Uh, does your uh, love interest enjoy uh, Zach Bryan? No, nah, she's not really into country music. Hmm. Who's Kitty? Yeah, I didn't know that either. Kenny. They said Kitty. Pretty sure it was Kenny. I thought they said Kitty. And I think it's an inside joke that we're not privy to. No. So in all honesty, was it the best clip to cut? Ah, I don't know. But you know what? I cut it. Yeah, you did cut it for sure. <laughs> no, I didn't say it was a bad clip. I just didn't know what they were talking Jason's about. Pleasing. I do like Dan and Shay, though. They're on The Voice this season, and it's just full of personality, really nice guys. I think some of those shows, you kind of get a feel for what the stars are really like. Like Lionel Richie comes off really well on uh, American Idol. You know, you like him more than ever. After what about Katy Perry? Yeah, yeah. Kind of what you would expect to get. Yeah. Full personality. Think that's that's why the they're on there. Thanks what? You think she's been with a woman? Probably so, yeah. Good for you. I think she's done Great. just about everything you can think of. Jackson, you agree with him? Katy Perry? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go, yeah. Like, in the early 2010s, I bet, because that's when she was, like, really popping, you know, California girl. But you feel like now she would turn away a sapphic advance? No. Oh. Uh, is she married? I think she's married. Doug, is she married? Uh, they probably try to keep that stuff quiet. I don't believe so. Her, her and Kim English are keeping it quiet. Uh, yeah. Katy Perry is uh, uh, partner's Orlando Bloom. Oh, is that right? Yeah. But she was, of course... And he's well hung, isn't he? I don't know, Tim. I'm pretty sure that there was a famous picture of him at a pool. I think I've used it, right? <laughs> and it's and there's an outline of his love. I, that stands to reason. He well, was why a, would that stand to reason? Well, did you ever see Pirates of the Caribbean? Woof, woof. Flip that off. <laughs> Play yeah, what's party. Wrong? What happened to you? I, I mean, Orlando Bloom in the early aughts. That was a handsome man. He kind of looks like Pedro Pascal now. But if a man is handsome, does that also mean that he's well hung? No, no, no. No, hmm. no, no. 
Uh, my, like, well, what a tough beat for like, let's say, Doug, who's the, the hottest guy? Uh, Iggy, I guess. <laughs> All right. And let's say Iggy, Iggy had a microwave. So like a lady yeah. was really excited about to go down. The drawers come off, and then there's a little nubbin for loving. <laughs> what a bad beat that would be for everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? tough. That is really tough. I feel for those gentlemen. Um, yeah. Katy Perry has a song called I Kissed a Girl and Liked It. That's oh, right. from Tate mm. McRae. Forgot about Yeah, that. and I remember uh, Matt Damon bottomed as Liberace. Oh, uh, yeah. Or did he top Liberace? Michael Douglas was the bottom. Aren't to some, aren't there some parts you just say, I don't, I don't need to work that bad. I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to be in this. There's a great picture of Carrie, Katy Perry out there from a while back. She was at, a, I guess, a water park with all of her friends. And she was Hurricane climbing. Harbor. She was climbing up the steps. <laughs> Hurricane Harbor. Yeah, yeah. And she, she had was, a t-shirt on. She was climbing up the steps of the the ladder of the pool, and her bottoms came down. No. Oh. Great picture. Nobody wants to have sex with me now. <laughs> There's KP. Great picture of her butt. Oh. But she's with Orlando Bloom, so gotta give her credit. He's okay. handsome. He, he dated that uh, really famous model that I interviewed from Australia. Miranda <laughs> Kerr. It had, it had Miranda. to get around to you somehow. <laughs> I was waiting. Finally it did. Oh, it's one of my favorite interviews because Hello, Iggy. With that Australian accent. <laughs> that sounded like it was like Cockney. <laughs> Peaky Blinders. Mm. Yeah, Birmingham. Those, those people make, they make big money on the American Idol. and the Is that right? Boys. They get like 15 million a year. Is that right? Season. That's God why they get the, the top stars. How do you even milk a micro? We struggle with this in New Hampshire quite a bit. That's from the recovering alcoholic from Belleville in Webster Grove. Why would New Hampshire have that problem more than any other state? I think Jackson's friends there. <laughs> it's a good read. <laughs> New Hampshire doesn't get a lot of love, does it? Not much happens in New Hampshire. Does it? Not enough. Or maybe we just don't talk about it enough. I mean, Doug, we've always talked about going up there to see the foliage come October. I don't. Right. I have no interest in that whatsoever. Orlando Bloom posts a weekly photo of him in a Speedo from 1937, and you can clearly see his size. That's from glove blogger Tom Traven. Mm. Doug, he writes about blogs and gloves. Yeah, he does. Nitro gloves, latex. Uh, Katy Perry's breasts look wonderful. Thanks. Also, Tim, back to the 7 o'clock hour. My understanding is the Swing Haven board member wouldn't be thrilled about the proposition of sleeping with a subpar gal while the other dude gets to dig out his good-looking wife. Oh, Thanks, God. that's from Scott Sprinkle, Don't Paul Sack. dig out. <laughs> yeah, those verbs are tough. <laughs> oh. But it wasn't from his wife, it was from Scott himself. Has it ever been from his wife? <laughs> it has. She's, she's like Justin in Columbia, she strikes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Summer solstice. She'll Usually, text her texts are more sapphic oriented, and they strike. Gotcha. Is there a better Aussie than Angela White? Thanks, Eric in the Central West End. Jackson's Margot Robbie. Oh, yeah, I would agree with that actually. Margot Robbie. Angela White, for some reason, doesn't really do it for me, and I can't figure it out because she's a sharp woman, you know, very sporting, but for whatever reason, doesn't do it for me. Doug, really? I know you're not familiar with her work, but uh, not really, what does she do? The, She's uh, one of the more prominent adult film stars, oh. and I believe she's Australian or New Zealand. So how, do you know she, she, how do you know she's very sharp? I've seen her do interviews. She's built a, a, quite a business. She's won about 30 AVNs in the last three years. Well, that isn't necessarily an indication of intelligence, but the business she built, uh, she's sharp. But for whatever reason, I just don't, uh, I don't know what the deal is. I'm not, Doug, I'm not anti No, her, I can tell that you're not. But I'm not necessarily. Uh, she has like baby teeth. Baby, baby teeth. teeth. Baby Jake's teeth. Coke. She has very small teeth. When she smiles, it's like she still has baby teeth. I see, I see more and more pictures of people with absolutely perfect teeth. Oh, she like, got a veneers I, out of nowhere. Veneers. Are those all yeah. veneers? Is it veneers? Are veneers, man. Everybody has veneers, Because veneers are, are really expensive. They're super expensive, but a lot of people get payment plans on them bitches. <laughs> oh, man, that's like old money. <laughs> That's what I'm I wouldn't say it was old. to get veneers. I <laughs> Holy crap! I'm, I'm telling you, there. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say anything. He's got his Clayton living. <laughs> yeah, but there are people that will pay a little bit up front and then make payments on them teeth. That's like to, to get a whole mouthful, at least what you could see. I guess the tops and bottoms, but to the incisors, what would that cost? Forty k. Really? Thirty k. Over. Yeah. And there's people it just depends on how many you like. I don't know if you have to do the entire mouth no. or you fix what is you the know, only way you can see. Yeah. So probably I, like 24, eh, maybe not even that many, like 20. 
Yeah, I think 40 is probably the minimum. Do you just put yeah. them over your teeth, or do you have to have your teeth pulled? They kind of shave your teeth down. They shave them all the way yeah. down to numb. And, and then they glue them. them. They glue mm-hmm. them on the, on the top. It's a of huge it. process, but that, that, that's why you see everyone has the shiniest, brightest teeth. In Hollywood, mainly. I mean, you see them every now and then around the streets. Rock stars, too. Well, you can understand that. I mean, if you're making millions a year, 100%, it's, it's no big absolutely. deal. Absolutely. Yeah, and see, it's tied into your appearance, so I, yeah, you know, I get that. Yeah, idea. I understand that. But I, I see just other people. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely perfect, oh, white, I, white teeth. I could, huh? Doug, I know people you who do have that? them. It's a, expensive as hell. And not covered by insurance, obviously. It's no, cosmetic. No, no, no. You can't go to the dentist and get a whitener. Yeah, yeah not, like, not like... Not, you can't have all perfect teeth and just be pearly white all the time. Just there's some that. horror stories if you look at some that have been messed up. They're too big or too white. Yeah. Or not like actual... Like, it's... Yeah. You got to make sure you pick your dentist wisely. Maybe go off on that forty k. Yeah, that's really expensive. It's crazy. Well, that's forty thousand is nothing to a movie star or a rock star. Yeah, that's what I said. And they have- <laughs> Maybe we could get a sponsor that could get us all fitted for veneers. What is that? Two hundred k. We're gonna need a big, <laughs> big return. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had that thought when I when I see people with. It's a mouthful of absolutely perfect teeth. I go, mm-hmm. wow, what are they doing that I'm not doing? They're spending money, I guess, is what they're doing. I love when the show talks about something involving money and the renters hop in with how poor people do it. That's from Arbor Day. Veneers do not cost over 40 k That's from The Reluctant Cuck. It's 100% 40 I mean, it's, it is that number. I promise you that. Rule For a whole mouthful? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm Rule number sure. one of life, don't trust somebody who whitens their teeth. That's from Stephen Time. That's his <laughs> number that one that's, rule. I don't like know a, that that's true. He must be an all-natural guy, whichever It's like Chaz Palmentary and Bronx Tale, Doug. Mm-hmm. He said the way you can tell if a woman is good for you is if she leans over to open the door when you're uh, getting in, and you've just opened the door to let her in, the passenger side. Yeah, yeah. I always like that. You like that as a good rule? Yeah. If I let her in and I come over and she opens my door for me, I, say, I think she likes me. Probably going to get some tonight. Oh, gosh. I'm in dental school at the moment. I'm wondering if I could become the official dentist of TMA in three years. That's from JJ the Jet Plane. Sure you could. That? If you get us all free veneers. Good thing. It could be hard to... I love Southampton Dental. Shout out to them. They're great people. Uh, that's not a plug. I pay them uh, for my, my services. But if we have a TMA dentist, I'd be interested. Yeah. And that guy obviously listened to the show, so he's smart. Mm-hmm. We have an unofficial dentist. Who? TMA. I'm not going to mention his name because he's got smoke shows. Oh yeah, I thought Biondo yeah. was a eye oh, doctor. Oh, he is an eye doctor, isn't he? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, for wow. heaven's sakes! <laughs> Thank God my Tyler O'Neill take was getting there as one of the worst. That was so funny. Never mind. Oh, oh God! Early cut of the <laughs> drop of the week there, Jackson. You just <laughs> mark that one right there. Marked, brother. Well, when you when you have a tooth problem. Uh, you got real issues. It, it just drives you nuts, Tooth doesn't it? Tooth and ear, I feel like, are the ones that are so ungodly annoying. They come yeah. and go in huge spurts. I'm with you, Doug. It's something that you can't immediately get rid of. Mm-hmm. You can't just go to the dentist and it fixed. You get usually have an appointment. They check it out. They give you some antibiotics, and then you go fix it weeks later. Right. It's a process. There's a lot of people afraid to go to the dentist. I went just this week. I went for a regular clean. I didn't feel a thing. I there was not week. one thing that was the tiniest bit uncomfortable. I went last week, and I'm pretty sure a cavity is much more growing than getting like a crown or a root canal now. Like, like the advancements of technology and what they have is yeah. insane. Oh, it really has Respect come along. Respect craft. Way. Yeah. Come uh, Doug, The Athletic has come out with uh, their rankings of franchises in Major League Baseball since the start of the wild card era. When was the start of the wild card era? Oh. 1995. Yeah. 95. Who do you think the worst team has been since 1995? I think you're going to get this. Pirates? That's correct. Well, they went like 22 years in a row without getting into the playoffs. Right? Uh, I think that actually is the math. Uh, 21, 21 like years? 21. 92 maybe yeah. to, 90, to 2013. Mm-hmm. Cardinals. Wainwright, Gerd Which Paul. is a shame because it's a beautiful stadium. Yep. Um, best team? Uh, in the wild card era. Braves or Yankees? Uh, Yankees Dodgers? is correct. Yankees? Um, second. Dodgers? No. Braves? Yes. Third. Dodgers? No. Uh, Cardinals? Yes. 
that essentially lines up with the Bill DeWitt ownership era. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the wallet. Uh, but uh, it's the Yankees one, the Braves two, the Cardinals three. This is done through objective data. It is a formula that is done by Bobby Sturb. No, oh, Sturbsy. What the hell is Bobby Sturb? Uh, these, uh, these rankings are born from a tested, trusted, completely objective, never been questioned, all math, no bias formula borrowed from football writer. Bob Stern and tweak to fit baseball's postseason structure. Uh, winning the World Series gets you nine points. Losing the World Series gets you six points. Losing in an LCS gets you three points. Losing in a division series, two points. Losing in the wild card, one point. So there you go. As of last year, the scoring system also incentivizes division titles, plus one point, and penalizes prolonged losing cycles, docking teams a point each time they lose at least 90 games in consecutive seasons. Tally the point totals for the past 29 seasons, 95 to 2023, and the result is the franchise rankings as listed below. Uh, Second worst, this is saying something since they have a world championship and nobody around them uh, does, unless I'm missing one, but I'm pretty sure the Pirates obviously don't have one, the Reds don't have one, and the Orioles don't have one, but the Royals do, and they also have another pennant, but the Royals are 29. Mm. Uh, the Reds, 28, Orioles, 27, and then the Blue Jays, 26. Blue Jays were great at, right before the wild card era with back-to-back world championships. No World Series in 94, and then the wild card era starting up in uh, 95. Uh, after the Cardinals, it's the Dodgers, then the Red Sox, Astros, Giants, Guardians with no world championship, Rangers, that kind of surprises me, um, and then the Phillies. And there is your uh, mm-hmm. your top ten. Speaking of the Orioles, boy, they have turned it around in a big way. You see what they've done this spring? They're like sixteen and four this, this spring. They're stomping teams. This is like a, a potential dynasty with just. I know they they've gone through. It's the Astros. They've gone through six to eight years of hell to get here. Yeah. You basically burn the entire city down to build it mm-hmm. back up. But right now, that that team is absolutely loaded. Yeah. Tim, what I found interesting about this list was kind of what you just alluded to. The Royals are sitting there at second to worst with the World Championship. The closest team with the World Championship that next to them is the White Sox at 17. I know, and that's that's the thing that stood out to me. is how it's so Where That just shows how at? bad they have been. Mm-hmm. Where are the Marlins? Because they've won two, but they've sucked when they 21. don't. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the Marlins. 21 would be uh, the closest. Oh, 95, and they won in. Yeah, they're like the Royals. They either won a World three. Series or they just mm-hmm. lose 100 games every year. Yeah, they got two of them, 97 and 2003. Um, Royals got lucky where they had a bunch of guys right in their prime all at the same time. Had a great bullpen. Remember that bullpen yeah. there? That was mm-hmm. fantastic. But the Pirates are not only the worst, they're like really the worst. They're the only it's team not even on here close. with negative points. They have negative points. I gave you how the scoring system. And the Royals have seven for the record. Uh, the, the winner is a winner by a good amount, too. I mean, I think that's something if you're going to talk about the point system. The Yankees are at 110 points. And keep in mind, really, the Yankees haven't done much. I mean, they've been successful, but they haven't won a World Series in 15 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the Yankees have 110 points, then the next team, the Braves with 81, then the Cardinals, 72. And that's why when the thing comes up about Bill DeWitt, I'm just like, man, whenever that man either steps down as chairman or passes away he will be looked at as one of the greatest owners in St. Louis sports history. Yeah, who which, would which, be better? Which, which then gets backlash. I mean, not, not, and it's not necessarily from, like, you know, people I'd hang out with, but uh, it still gets backlash yeah. because, but it's just like, it's, I mean, what... what people <laughs> demand, <laughs> they demand a pennant winner every year, and if they don't get it, he's an idiot. <laughs> I just don't like, I don't that's, tell you. that's kind of what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the Yankees and the Pirates are, are the extreme examples of right. n- money is no object, we'll spend whatever, and we don't have any money, we can't spend anything. And, that, you know, for those that argue it's all about money, th- that's the case laid out right there for them. Well, it's but getting to the point there's no where, easy solution in baseball. No, it's getting to the point, though, where this, you know, well, we're, we're successful every year is wearing off. Have you considered just getting into the playoffs and losing in the first round successful? No. So... They always used to go back to, well, I think we've been pretty good, haven't we, over the years? You know, well, that's going to wear off because getting to the playoffs isn't really a successful year anymore. I don't know. I think it is. I think it is. Well, not if you get knocked out in the first round. 
Well, you don't. Nobody wants to, but half the teams do. Half the teams that get in the playoffs get knocked out in the first round. I'm only for an all or nothing mentality. Either you you completely rebuild and you try in a few years, or you ball out, spend money, and be competitive. Like where are the Cardinals at? It's like my worst, most annoying thing about what teams do is stay in the middle. It's I know you need to be fiscally responsible, so I understand that portion of it, but. Just staying right there on the but fringe. But they, they of haven't the been in the middle. They haven't been in the middle. They had one horrendous year. Other than that, they haven't been in the middle. I'm talking about like the middle of the road in terms of half the teams make the playoff. They backdoor their way into the playoffs. Half the teams the don't make card. the playoffs. Half the teams do oh, not the make the playoffs. Oh, the new second wild card thing is insane, Doug. Like, what, it's so 30, easy to make the playoffs. There's 30 teams and how many? T- 12, 14 or 12? 12 14? make it. That's correct. Well, yeah, that's that's not half. I'm not saying that's the measure of a great team. I'm saying that's still the measure of a successful season. You're if p- every game you play is important, if you're putting thirty-five to 40,000 people in the stands every night and you've provided entertainment for six months and you got a chance to win the championship after the regular season, that's a pretty successful season. Not a great season yet. But pretty successful. Are you saying everyone who gets in the playoffs and doesn't win the World Series does not have a successful season? I didn't say don't win the World Series. I, I, they at least think, won a playoff series. I think you're painting it pretty broad. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm comparing what the Cardinals are doing lately. Not just overall, but lately they're just kind of there. They're not very entertaining. They're not out there spending a ton of money. They do make terrible decisions and terrible moves. They have made some good moves as well with the Goldschmidt Arenado before you join. I, I get mm-hmm. it. There's a good and a bad side of that. I just don't see Mosellock fitting in with the times. I think he's way too analytical, and I think we've seen that. Taking out Jose Quintana, you know, that those types of mindsets and those types of people that you hire, you just, we, we overthink a lot of things. And by we, I mean the coaching staff and on up. Yeah. Well, last year was horrendous, for sure. But I think you have to be cautious about letting that paint your whole opinion about the current administration, the ownership, the people that run the team. They had a horrible year. They'd be the first to admit it. But they've also strung together two pretty darn good decades that they, that they need to get some credit for. I think Jeff Lunau deserves a lot of credit as well. He's been gone quite a while. <laughs> but you're going to go back to 95. You're talking about Lunau days were actually the successful days as well. I mean, we're acting like John Mosellock and DeWitt were the only ones that created this quote-unquote no, pillar of Walt success. Walt had some great years. The, the constants have been the DeWitts that have been there. And I think if, if when they signed on as the new owners, if we had been told how many years they'd be in the playoffs and World Series championships they would have delivered, we'd say, well, take it. 100% I love the DeWitts. Uh, Doug, uh, they are not happy with you, and uh, when they're not happy with you know. me or you or Jackson, I try to highlight it uh, because the plowhawk uh, and E uh, is usually the uh, focal point. Sure. Uh, been a, sure. Uh, let's see. Uh, how much are they paying you to be a shill, Doug? That's from Chairman <laughs> Stephen Wildwood. Is Doug joining that? Ba- is Doug joining? That's where this one was going. Is Doug joining that Bailey's Sports rights holder lineup of media members? That's from Gary Pinkle's cell phone etiquette. Uh, I think you have to be fair. You have to look at the big picture. I get where you come from, Doug, and I'm not saying I completely disagree with you. I, I, I just... When you go back to 95 and you're talking about what, it, what actually happened the last five or six years, looking at the division we play in as well, we're not, you know, not like we're playing the Dodgers and the Giants. Yeah. We play in a pretty weak division. Second week is in baseball. Um, so I, I think, there's, like I said, there's a lot more factors than just that broad stroke of, mm-hmm. oh, if you make the playoffs, it should be successful. Well, the teams we're playing, it, it, it makes it a little bit better of an advantage for us to slide on in there. That doesn't mean it's been successful. It just means that the whole division is very underachieving. Well, just as one well, example, just as Baltimore to... and before that Houston tanked and had a great uh, a run there of great mm-hmm. early first round draft picks. The Cardinals usually pick at the in, near the end of the draft. Agreed. And they don't ever get the premier player in the country but, when they pick, when they draft. But that was my whole point from the very beginning. Is I'm a go all or nothing guy. Either you do the Astros the Oriole thing or you do the Yankees thing. That, that's that's how I like it, and I'm not saying yeah. that's right, wrong. That's my person when I'm watching baseball or any sport. 
either I want you all in or I want you rebuilding and trying to reform that roster yeah. in the next three to five yeah. years. Well, I hear you. I, I just and prefer, I know that doesn't work all the time. I just I prefer guess. the other approach of trying to be competitive every year. I don't want to go through a three- or four-year stretch where the team is horrendous with no guarantee that they're ever going to get out of it. There's no guarantee. Just because you sell off and, and go all new and rebuild, there's no guarantee it's going to work. I get that as well. It's not 100%. You have a treat? Oh, milk cream pie. You just slammed <laughs> that into your mouth. Right in the middle of a heated discussion. <laughs> it was indeed. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Doug, Sorry, I'm going to tell you about uh, Longo Biggs. Longo Biggs is online at L-O-N-G-O, B-I-G-G-S dot com. If you're injured in a car accident and you need an attorney, you need the best one you can find. If any of my family or friends are ever injured in a car accident, I want them to call Doug Biggs and C.D. Longo at Longo Biggs Injury Law. Uh, they are not the churn and burn type of law firm. With Doug and C.D., you won't be just another file lost in the shuffle. If you have questions about your case, you'll talk to Doug or CD personally, and they will handle every aspect of your case the entire way. They'll get to know you, and you will get to know them. Doug and CD are local, friendly, professional, and most importantly, excellent personal injury lawyers. Plus, they are listeners of the show. It's Longo Biggs online at longobiggs.com. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely on advertisements. And you should also... Think about it. So, what are you doing? Oh, you're thinking about it. Jackson, tell me about your hair. What are you thinking about? Thinking about a lot. Thinking about how I looked a year ago. How I, you know, I felt... You felt heavy and bald. <laughs> heavy heavy also? <laughs> yeah. He did. Yeah. 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 And, and none of us knew he felt heavy. Yeah. And it was that yellow diaper picture that opened his eyes. Oh, it's I true. can see how that could happen. Yeah. One of the uh, least appealing... So, in a way, image. aren't you glad you wore the yellow diaper? Ah, <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. Might be some revisions. We necessary. still have it here if you'd like to put it on again. <laughs> no, more motivation. no, no, no. Has your, has your love interest seen that image? No, God. I hope she never does. <laughs> How heavy set were you, guy? I was like, I think I weighed in after we got home from Jamaica, like 202 or 3 pounds. Mm. And that's just not where I wanted to be. And so I, uh, I dropped the weight, and I also looked at my head, and I was like, ah, hair's kind of, hairline's kind of moving back still, and the crown is really the big issue. And so we went over to our friends over at St. Louis Hair Restoration, where they gave me free hair consultation, took a look at the head, and said, all right, all right I think this is what is going to be best for you. And they can do the same thing there at St. Louis Hair Restoration for you. They'll take a look at your head and tell you what the best treatment plan possible going forward is. And then if you mention TMA... That's $250 off said hair treatment. And then you can be the mayor of Tough Town along with yeah. me and Doug. Look at that FUE procedure. Look at that quaff. Look at that bouffant. Yeah, let me get out my sash again. Yes. Ooh, mayor, mayor of, of Tough, Tough Town. Town. There it is Bad right there. Boys. You can see that on YouTube. Mayor of Tough Town. I have a sash now because I got tufts of plenty. I got so many tufts, I got to get haircuts about twice as often as I used to. If there's a downside, that would be it. You're going to have to get haircuts again because, boy, look at this. Look at this quaff I've got now. A welcome I like change. It. I like it, yeah. I've got my 20-year-old hairline back. Unbelievable. And I didn't think I was going to get that much. I didn't think it would come back this well. But it did with the FUE procedure. Here's what I did. I went in like, uh, oh, I think it was 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And they talk with you and say, here's what's going to happen. They take some before pictures. And then you just sit and you wait for them to get you ready. And at about 8.30, it starts. And by noon or so, 12.30, maybe 1 o'clock, I was done. They bring you lunch. I watched movies. There was no pain involved whatsoever. They move the, the hair follicles from the side and back of your head where you have lots of hair. And they move it where to the front or to the crown where you don't have hair. And then you just sit and you wait for it to grow. And then a couple months later, ha, ah, you've got hair. It works that easy. Go to the before and after pictures at stlouishairrestoration.com. You'll be amazed at the difference that it makes for some people. It made a big difference for me. It'll work for you as well. Dr. Polinga and the founder, Greg Kreiling, patients of their own product. This stuff works. And as I keep telling people, no, it did not hurt at all. They numbed it up. They numbed it up real nice. Uh, so wholeheartedly recommend you, you have this done if your baldness is something that's always bothered you. StLouishairRestoration.com. There it is. And uh, I'm, inter I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they well, can you should do. Be. I just don't know. I don't know what they can do. But I'm, uh, I'm going to talk. I sent them an email about coming in oh, yeah? to look at you. I haven't heard back yet. Maybe, like they, they're maybe, not they, interested. maybe they didn't get. Do they that. not handle asymmetrical skulls? Is there a little like fine print thing there? They they may send you to some sort of metal worker or something. That <laughs> move things around. Like the Iron Workers Union, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. like a hall to okay. shape it a little bit better. <laughs> Dip hot lava kind of on your head. No, I'm sure. I'm sure they could handle it. That crossed the line, boy. Yes, I dug they're not happy with the topics. 
Okay. Jackson's exhausted at 26. Just tuning in today. Are we really doing this Cardinal bashing again? Wow, I think the Cardinals will be awful. Wow, I don't even watch the games or pay for my own Baileys. Mm. Wow, and that's Big Tuft, and he's not happy with the show. Gosh, I mean, no pick. one's tickled. Glass houses don't throw stones. Think about that. Mm. He's complaining about what we're complaining about. Is rubber a topic we stumble upon that everyone likes? Is it, it, does it always have to be cuckolding? <laughs> Is that the only universally accepted topic? <laughs> Big Tough literally hates the show. I'm going through it like, don't stop listening. Do yourself a favor. Like, if it's pissing you off, just... I assume he's been to St. Louis Hair <laughs> Restoration if his name is there? Big Tough. <laughs> <laughs> you don't suppose he's one of the owners. Wow, that, that might be why they're not getting back about yeah. doing my uh, my lopsided head. Could be. I expect if you owned St. Louis Hair Restoration, <laughs> you would like your name to be Big Tough. <laughs> Jackson not liking that he was 202 pounds while the rest of the fat sads wish they could be close to 250 is like Mo making a trade. That's from Pout Pout's <laughs> Lanai. Yeah, everyone has different expectations for what their body should look And you're at 179 now, is that right? Yeah. 79, Doug. Yeah. 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 Yeah, T. Jackson made the conscious decision to blow it up, start the rebuild. <laughs> He's fat and just want to keep the same size and lose a half pound every year and consider that a success. It was like trading Goldschmidt. You and I are living <laughs> parallel lives separated by 40 years. Yeah, that's true. But where my weight was similar to yours, and now it's similar to yours You're now. You're over 200 pounds? I was getting close. Really? Yeah. God, you guys, I just don't see it. It was a lot in the face. That's where I felt like most of really? my, my beef went. Yeah, I had, mm. it in the, I had it in the gut. Boy beef. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, guys, the topic that's universally liked is we like talking about emails sent for interviews that are immediately turned down. <laughs> that's from Chairman Stephen Wildwood. Doug, he won the Milagro Tequila mm. Listener of the Year in 2023. Okay, enjoy it. Why'd you bring it up again? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, can, you can be the Milagro Tequila Listener of the Month for the month of... Borch by going to tmastl.com and signing up. It's Milagro Tequila. Welcome to a brighter side of tequila with Milagro. Uh, and if you are interested in getting your lawn taken care of for the spring and having that lawn looking wonderful for the upcoming summer, and it's so glorious that I feel like I can talk about it, now I'm not just kidding myself, Doug. It's, it's here. I mean, even when you look at cold days, you go, oh, it's in the mid-40s. It's uh, nothing but 60s uh, in, the, in the forecast today. It's cloudy, but it's still going to be in the 60s. Tomorrow, it looks like it's going to be glorious. Mm -hmm. 68, it's going to be partly cloudy, but it's still going to be in the mid-50s for St. Patrick's Day. It's just wonderful. Well, you got to get the lawn taken care of with Green Envy. They've been in business for St. Louis in St. Louis for over a decade. And Green Envy only uses products that are formulated for the Missouri slash Illinois soil and the weather conditions and turf types we get. No national, generic, cheap, and effective products. Uh, when we get rain, weeds explode and the temperatures warm up. And that's when the time you see the weeds all over the place. This is the time to get ahead of it. Uh, and with Green Envy customers, service calls no charge for weed touch-up or reapplying weed control for Green Envy customers. Green Envy deploys a special crabgrass preventer. Uh, it's a trade secret, and that's why they don't name it, but it keeps weeds from taking over your lawn. They're open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday, Saturday from 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. The number is 636 757 1600. That's 636 757 1600. Green Envy. Hey, uh, Craig Betts is in the building. Is he? I'm telling you, my wife listens to the show, so this is kind of a high risk move. Yeah. But I feel a, Doug, what do you call it, a fiduciary responsibility to go into Glenn Betts Jewelers on Manchester and to pair and use the TMA 15% off? Yeah, that's a And nice just like deal. buy jewelry for, I don't know, mm -hmm. the next. Decade? Jim, and he's well, brought, here he comes now. He's brought in he's Bellows the Bakery, too. Hey, you know what? what do you have? Uh, well, just because... Of, yeah, Let's get, I want to get you on a microphone here. Oh, yeah, Craig, here no. I am. There he is. Just because we had some birthdays in the room last week... I Happy birthday I to Jackson and Plowboy yeah. birthday from Bellows Bakery. How do you like that? What a Happy treat. Happy birthday, fellas, just because... Look at that. Oh, look at that. Jackson Gosh. came over and he did a... Thank you so much. Look at this oh, and look at that. Gosh, this is Daddy. Daddy. 
My sure goodness. That's light in calories. Let me Be- tell you something. It is. <laughs> Bellows is the best. That's oh, my goodness. Bellows it's it's, the, that's, it's uh, what, that's right by yeah. I was about to right say, what us. is it, like a like a couple blocks down at yeah, the yeah, most? I was there Saturday. Was gonna, is that right? Block and a half. It is used so good. Shmee Myers used to be another bakery, yeah. but it's, it's, it's I was awesome. going to stop in and see you Saturday because I went and picked up some bread and donuts uh, Saturday from there. And it was kind of early. I'm not sure you're open yet, but... My first well, you never know. Like <laughs> really? You never know. The, pe- the penmanship on the cake decorating is just remarkable. Oh, you know, oh, how you could write you know, that well. You know, there's two of the like balloons on there. Bag. That has some significance, too. Uh, balloon party. Balloon party. Oh, balloon party. Oh, Doug, it's a balloon go. party. It's, it's a balloon party. Oh, yeah. I got weight to it. So it's always yeah. thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, that's fantastic. Thank you. The 15% that's off. Awesome. off. Did, you, did you leave the studio last week and say to David, <laughs> have you gone mad, boy? Is that what you said to him? I go, Diamond, Dave, come on. I'm doing this for free. 15% off. Set off. <laughs> Diamond <laughs> Dave and Carrot Craig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Old Diamond Dave couldn't be with us today. He had a very special meeting he uh, uh, had to attend. But uh, yeah, probably the Glenn Betts Jewelers board is having him removed after the fifteen percent off. That's what's going well, on. You know, actually, I can, I can improve on that uh, just to make sure everyone is clear. You know, our pricing is generally lower than what typical retail pricing mm-hmm. is. Uh, That's you know, why you have that loyal generational customer base. Yeah, That's why people yeah, go in. We'd like to think that, but yeah. you know, there, there's there are games with retail pricing and things like that. Mark it up to give eighty percent off and still yeah. getting what they want. So, with the TMA promotion, I said, you know, on top of what we already give, we're going to give an extra fifteen percent off, and it's not just starting off at fifteen. I see. So yeah, I see just, what you're saying. Uh, just a little extra push. A little promo. Is. is there any inventory left? Yeah, so her oh, audience flooded the inventory. building. Oh, is it? Yeah, <laughs> well. yeah, yeah. We do. Uh, we do have a, a, a wide array of uh, in stock inventory um, for those just because. Just gifts. because gifts. Um, yeah, you know. Again, like we said last week, you know, there's always the traditional moments, and there's always milestones in people's lives that uh, it, uh, it 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 leans towards gift giving, and and uh, uh, not every. Jewelry purchase has to be a, a home run. You know, there's accessories mm-hmm. in that that can be gotten at, uh, at, at, at different price levels and that that uh, can can score a lot of brownie points. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we've seen over the years and, and see the excitement on the recipients and things like that. It's uh, it's fun. So um, you know, that's why we came, you know, we just started talking about, you know, when's the best time to give gifts or mm-hmm. whatever, whether it's the traditional ones, but the ones that score the points are the, the just because oh, yeah. gifts yeah. that they're not expected. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, just because. What, you, what you else know, do we have now just you know, because? last week, when, you know, when I saw you when we were leaving last week, you said something about, I'm not playing another game of golf until I practice. Well, I got some. Uh, oh, my goodness, from family from, golf? From my son's uh, golf, uh, family golf, I got some uh, buy one, get some free buckets of golf. Oh, oh my, my goodness. So, uh, I was there yesterday hitting balls. Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, was, uh, I was viewing your uh, little video out here. And What'd you, you think? You got it, Glenn. You, you just got to. How about that, Iggy? Yeah, you just got to hone it down a little bit, hone it up, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't mind paying at family golf. Look at that practice area, the, the short game area is that's tremendous. That's where I was. Yeah, I love awesome. that short game. That's where I was. That's where I was. And, you know, I always used to say, you know, hey, man, if you're going to play golf, if, if I'm going to practice golf, I'm going to go play golf. And uh, my son straightened me out on that. It's, uh, you'll enjoy the game much better if you practice. Practice yeah. a little bit. And it is mm-hmm. so true. Yeah. 100 yards and in, Doug. 100 yards and in. I know. Doug's got a putting problem. Craig, you got any tips for him? Keep working at it. <laughs> I, I do. I try different grips. I took different stances and different. Oh, it's not a yip thing. It's not a yip thing. I don't think it's a yip thing. I, I don't a, know if it's a, if I line up wrong or. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I have those difficulties too sometimes. But I think sometimes uh, it's just that other ten percent. You know, Bob Rotella said, you know, ninety percent of the game is mental. Ah, yeah. sports psychologist. Yeah, to the and stars. he says, and he told the boys at this. Uh, Luxury said the other ten percent's mental too. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's the mental between the ears. And yeah. you're right. I. We all struggle with that. I do have a confidence issue. I played Monday, par 3, 150-yard par 3. I was maybe 15 feet from the hole on my tee shot, just just barely off the green. And I'm walking up thinking, I'll get a 5 out of this. Oh, my God. And sure enough, I putted way past the hole and then missed a comeback putt and then missed and tapped in for a 5. What the hell is going on? I should have had maybe a a birdie, a tap-in par, and I knew it was coming. Knew it was coming. Wow. And Back I tell myself. That is, that is mental. That <laughs> yeah. is 100% that is mental. That is mental because you told yourself you're yeah. going to yeah. five. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I, get well, I don't like yeah. hearing that. Yeah. yeah. Uh. I played a little bit yesterday. Went out yesterday to play par three with mm-hmm. my, my son, Nick. Yeah. And the, the store looks like, you know, we're all about to die. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, ah, we can get a few holes in. 
First hole, the tornado warning signs oh, are going up. Now nah, we got a couple more holes in it. <laughs> and he's saying, "Don't you think we should leave?" No, I got to get this putting thing ironed out. I never did. I cannot putt. I can't. Hey, uh, don't give up, man. It is frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's don't the easiest thing. I have a little putting yeah. practice green in my basement. I go down there every day. I can't putt still. Yeah. Man, this is a mess. Yeah. Just quit the game. Yeah. yeah. No, there's it. There's I'm some considering counsel. it. You're gonna hang it up. Well, I, I probably should. You got the Fan Page Club Championship coming up. Well, oh boy. whoever yeah, gets exactly. me is in yeah. good shape. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Tee to green, okay. Putt, no, no hope. No yeah. chance. What's Next your son Adam's walk? biggest uh, tip, considering he's like, what, a plus one, two, Eight, three, two. something like that, plus two? Mm. That's nice to have. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing is, because it's so mental, uh, it always says, uh, uh, start with loosening the grip. Oh, Wow, that's kind you of know, a nice little play. If you're up there mentally thinking, yeah. you know, 20 things, you just start gripping that club. Yeah, you know. yeah. Loosen the grip. What yeah. about that, Doug? What and about that? that? Just kind of settles right. you from the... Soft hands maybe, around the grip. Maybe not from the head down, but the shoulders down, it starts yeah. relaxing. Yeah. It's up to you to... Uh, yeah, I try a very loose grip, and I'm, I'm all over the place. Oh, like no. This is a thing. Yeah. <sighs> well, just have fun at it. it. Just have fun at it. Get a long putter, Doug. It'll help. Yeah, maybe like that. Yeah, uh, I just got a new putter. I got for last Father's Day. They got me one of these Scotty. Oh, they got Cameron. Scotty Cameron. Yeah. Those are good putters. Yeah. yeah, I looked in the store. It was like four hundred and thirty. You spent four hundred and thirty-five dollars <laughs> on a putter, I, and I'm still five putting. <laughs> five putting. <laughs> Those must be big greens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be a big green. <laughs> Craig, uh, uh, thank you so much for the birthday cake on beha behalf of the Plow yeah, Hawk. Just, it is turned thirty-five. Jackson twenty-six this week. Just wanted to pop just in because. and uh, say hi and. Drop that off. And the that's ten percent off. What are the uh, hours on the weekend? And I'm asking for my own uh, personal interest here. Well, you know, I got keys on the belt all the time, oh, wow. so I can uh, see you there anytime. Oh wow! You want. All right. But uh, we're open on uh, Saturdays from ten to two. Okay. And uh, Tuesday through Friday. <coughs> excuse me, nine thirty to five thirty. All right, there it is. Uh, ten to two on Saturdays yep. and mm -hmm. Tuesdays through Friday. And you know, Fridays. if those hours conflict with uh, 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 yours, we like I said. To make Give us a make call, it iron. Yeah, the fifteen percent off make TMA promotion. Well, that's awesome. Thank you yeah. so much, and you thanks bet, for the man. cake. Great to see you, Craig. Hey, it's great to see thanks, you. Well, thanks. Thanks. There there is. We'll great. pop in again some other day. Right. Appreciate Alrighty. it, man. All right, Glenn Betts Jewelers, fifteen percent off on Manchester, uh, into pair, uh, about a mile east of the I two seventy and Manchester exit. Uh, plenty of parking right behind the building, and uh, they do a, a great job. And loyal listeners of the program and brought, I'm telling you, that Bellows Bakery. Oh, it's when, when my wife hits Bellows Bakery. Ooh, cats and dogs, Doug. Cats and dogs. That place. Where is, is that? I don't think I've ever uh, been. It's about a block and a half to the east of Glen Betts Jewelers, so it's in De Pere. Oh, Maybe right okay. across from Circle 7. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know where yeah, that is. It's right past, okay. uh, when you pass Deerberg's. There's a little little shopping mall there on the right. Mm -hmm. It's neat, on the corner. Neat bakeries in St. Louis. Yeah, Bellows with the cakes. I, Missouri Baking Company with the chocolate drops. I mean, you have pint size with those oatmeal style cookie that they make. Missouri Bakery down there on the hill. Yeah, that, like those, each one has like a significant, like a, a signature snack that is enjoyed by all. Is Lake Everybody Forest has a place, yeah. and I like that. Is Lake Forest still around on Clayton Road? I don't know. God, was, we used to get a lamb cake there every. Uh, lamb cake? Lamb ba. What's that? Yeah, it was just a. Uh, uh, white white cake with the vanilla icing and coconut in the shape of a lamb that we get every Easter. Hmm. We always got it from Lake Forest. Yeah. Hey, pal. What's up? <laughs> I slimmed down when I sobered up. Got the church wife. Then I got fat again, and now I farm her out to Tim and friends. <laughs> That's from the recovering alcoholic sure. from Belleville and Webster Grove. Sure. Like how that was Farms just to me. are out. You like that? You like that term <laughs> farming? It's like around? he's getting paid for it. Uh, Tail is all his time. Again, addressed to me. I don't know why, but... We're at the recovering alcoholics <laughs> going to Stevie Nicks. If he has, we can all meet at Olive and Oak before the show. <laughs> we keep getting back to Stevie Nicks. <laughs> Most of the show revolves around no, Stevie I, Nicks. No, it evolved around recovering alcoholic and Olive and Oak. And Stevie Nicks. If he's going to the show, that'd be a good time to go have dinner there again. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We will see. But she's not doing any interviews with you. Thanks to Craig, too, for the uh, family golf. That'll be a nice hit. Yeah, I'll take one medium bucket, uh, buy another one, and just hit balls for an hour or two. Yeah. Then hover over to that short game area. Short game area. I had it to myself yesterday. Oh, it's the best. Ooh, ooh. Just 
90, 100 yard. Uh, Doug, was it the 58 degree? Is that what I was hitting? That's I don't know. I wasn't there. Oh, oh, just glorious. God, it's the best. I could do that forever. It's so strange, I think. I think I would rather do that than play. I mean, it's not that I don't like playing. I, just, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, that's short game here at Family Golf. Bees knees. 100 yards and in. 100 yards and in. That's where the strokes are. All right, it is uh, 8.59. We'll close out the 8 o'clock hour. Schaefer Door Company, 9 o'clock hour. Coming your way, then Jackson. I'll go down the hallway. Don't worry. We have done this before. We will be fine. Things will be okay. What are you going to talk about, though, today, Jackson? I mean, this is really... Something Piddles Friday or something. Yeah. I know that, but like, what, like, what is like even like question, like, can you even get to five for the six-shooter? Who's going to coach this Bilkin squadron? Yeah, I'll take about 12 seconds of talking. Oh. Uh, when Tim says, I don't know. You can preview the Blues game tomorrow. You can talk about the Players' Championship. Talk so about... previewing the Blues game, what does that entail? You know. Who's probably going to play? <laughs> Guess your lineups. Who they're playing. Uh... Who's going to start? Who are yeah. they playing? Like... I would assume you'll see Benner in net tomorrow, and then they'll go over on uh, Sunday, Doug, for the game you're going to, and you're going to really lay into mm-hmm. the squad? I might. My favorite thing is the announcement of the starting lineups when the guys are out there 30 <laughs> seconds. And then uh-huh. out. Yeah, I know. I, I do find that intriguing, too. If it tells who the goalies are, that'd be one thing, but to say who's starting on right wing, <laughs> he that. might last 10 seconds. Right, exactly. Oh well. Yeah, today's today is uh, an earn your keep kind of day. But that's what we do. It's, uh, it's You're a, a keep earner. Yeah, you know, there's days where it's too much, right? I don't even need to write stuff down, and there's days like this where it's a little more dry. I have spent a lot of money sending mon- uh, money to listeners of Balloon Party for questions, and I, you know, track everything, budgets and so on, and and I'll see these Venmo charges. I'm like, what in the hell is that Venmo for? Thirty-five dollars for, and then I look it up, and I go, "Oh, it was like a random name who sent him the question that I sent money to a oh, balloon party." Yes. It catches up to you. It huh? does, especially when I'm losing money on the golf course, losing money to my neighborhood guy because I couldn't get the damn Jake Knapp button by minute. Oh. F me, I got damn near every player in the field and uh, the players except Scotty Scheffler. Now he's going to win again. I just, Doug, it's I'm Tony Soprano in the cooler right now. That's what I am. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this Venmo situation is live, and it's problematic. It's real problematic. Is that another way to spend money where you don't feel it? Venmo? Like, like credit oh, cards? I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're, you sound like Dave Ramsey right well, now. Venmo comes out of your bank account, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it sure yeah. does. But when you just <laughs> when you just send a number or something, it doesn't feel like you've really right. spent well, I mean, that's reaching why into your wallet. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I do because I get more every morning. I track everything but like i'm spending so much and i mean it's so much but there's just a few 35 dollars charges and i go what in the hell is that i pick that? i pick cash sometimes oh, just, to, party. just to get the feeling again of money leaving my wallet because yeah. it's easy to slap that credit card down well, that didn't cost nothing yeah. i know what you're saying i do know what you're saying doug uh for the record scotty scheffler is one back of wyndham clark doug they're just taking this tour over Okay. What they're doing. Well, he's got yeah. that mallet putter. Yeah. yeah, Max Homo with a nice triple bogey in the first hole. So you had him, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't be concerned. I got Nick, <laughs> I got Nick, I got Nick Taylor, too, at six under yesterday. Okay. I got two guys that aren't going to make the cuts. I don't know who you got on your team, but... I don't know. Shoffley. I had Shoffley. Oh, did he? He was the first-round leader, wasn't he? Yeah, tied right. with McElroy. Okay. T1. All right. And maybe I think Fitzpatrick tied him, too, at the... Uh, End of the round, seven under. So well, Wyndham Clark is your leader so as he like heads to the fifth. Seventeen under a win. And uh, Doug, you love Matthias Schmid. Well, he's one back, but tied mm-hmm. with Scotty Scheffler. And the postman, best putter on tour, is one two back of the lead. He's three under through five. And now you've been updated in Pontevedra. Nine oh three in St. Louis. We'll set the stage for the nine o'clock hour, which is sponsored by Schaefer Door Company. This is TMA presented to you by Brandon Crouppen. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court, and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com.
TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. College basketball's biggest tournament is coming, and it's time to start betting like a pro with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circa Sports Illinois. It's sports betting the way it should be. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Fund and bet like a pro anywhere, anytime. It's never been easier. Download your new bookie before all the March action at CircaSports.com. If you or someone you know have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. In business since the 50s, Collier and Thompson are known for kitchen and bathroom remodels. But they do so much more. If it's an interior remodeling job, Collier and Thompson can probably help. Basements, wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent rooms, fireplace walls, office, you name it. No need to visit five to ten showrooms when Collier and Thompson provides all your needs in their showroom on Manchester Road in Baldwin. Come home to quality with Collier and Thompson. Let them bring your dream remodel to reality. CollierandThompson.com. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. When we think of a real estate agent, we think of somebody simply selling our home or finding us a new one. I mean, they're all the same, right? Okay, here's the comps. We'll take some pics, we'll post them, and uh, hey, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you, okay? A home is life-changing, and your real estate agent should reflect that. Honesty, integrity, and someone who will go above and beyond to make your dreams come true. The Jeff Lyman Group with Compass Realty. We're different because you're different. We want what you want. Experience the difference today at JeffLutman.com, bringing people and properties together. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with Seth Goldcamp of Design Air Heating and Cooling, and I have been a long-time Design Air client. What separates you guys from everybody else? It's becoming more common for companies to just get their foot in the door. They try to come up with different ways to upsell. They try to see how much they can make off of a customer as opposed to, hey, we're in there to do a service. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it for a fair price. I don't know how many emails I have received from our listeners who experienced the incredible customer service Design Air Heating and Cooling provides. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling online at designairservice.com. Yeah, that plowboy is an interesting uh, dude, but he loves animals, and he wants to help adoptable dogs find homes. With TMA listeners, catch Plowsy Live on the TMA socials each week, highlighting a dog up for adoption from Open Door Animal Sanctuary in House Springs, St. Charles County Pet Adoption Center, and all all Paws Safe Haven. Plowsy's Pup of the Week. Brought to you by Chow Chow on the Hill. Everything you need to keep your pet's tail wagging. Find out more at TMASTL.com. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA TMA Listener of the Month. Get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro in the morning after on KPNT HD2. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. You've got to be on acid to understand what's going on on this show. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Everybody's working for Bill's Weekend. Think about that, Doug. What's on the uh, itinerary for you, Doug? I need to know. Uh, over the weekend? No. 
Uh, I've got blues tickets for Suns Bat. Yeah, you're going to hold the team accountable. Yeah. You've made that clear. Uh, I don't know really what's going on the rest of the weekend, to tell you the truth. I don't know. Mm. No big plans. Wow. I'm a simple guy. Not too much fun, Doug. Be a simple well, you guys got big plans? Uh, kind of. I'm going to try to win my money back from these a-holes tomorrow. I'm talking to you guys uh, on the golf course. Um, course nine. Course nine. Kidding me. Um, then Sunday I'll be with the uh, boys and my wife for St. Patrick's Day. You know, a bunch of mix getting together. Oh, will you go out or just... I'm not sure how... I, I don't know what a good St. Patrick's Day thing would be with, uh, you know, two young kids. It's such a good party day. It's a shame it's on a Sunday. Because it's a good excuse to go out on a weeknight or something and do something. Is the parade tomorrow, though? Like the downtown, uh, the Tam Avenue? Dogtown? Sure. Anybody know? I'm sorry. I don't. Pretty sure it's Sunday. Sun's been? Yeah. Should I take them there? They'd have a lot of fun. Oh, uh, sure. Go. Jackson, what do you do? Jackson's the one that I'm curious about as a man in love. He's doing all these wonderful things. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's still fresh. Doesn't realize what'll happen in, what is it, usually four or five years. Starts settling in and masturbating a lot. Oh. Let's be honest. Uh, uh, Jackson? Are you talking about for uh, St. Patrick's Day or just for the weekend? Uh, the weekend. Uh, hang with my girlfriend tonight. Hey, um, there it is. Probably playing golf both Saturday and Sunday. Oh, wow. Does she play? No. So what do you do with her when you're gone for six hours? What do you mean? Well, she just has to fend for herself. <laughs> like, live her life? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you mean. Doesn't she ever say, well, what am I supposed to do? We're hanging out the night before. Oh, gosh, this marriage isn't going to last. <laughs> gonna, I don't give it a chance in hell. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, good luck. Good luck to you, sir. Thanks, Doug. Okay. Doug, there it is. There's the... Okay. The Does she ever say, can I come? Do you ever say, why don't you come ah, and learn to play? That's a problem nice. when you get married. Nice, Doug. We'd ask the real questions. Mm -hmm. No, she has not asked uh, to play. Mm. Okay. She has other interests and things to do. Well, what if she said to you, I'm going to go do something else for six hours. You can stay home and pound sand. <laughs> you Like... We don't live together, so like I don't know what you mean by that. Yeah. Let me tell you something, Doug. Seems I love like Madison to death. When yeah. she says I have an actual six-hour day with the gal, I'm salling in, baby. Downtown tomorrow, Dogtown Sunday. Also, I'll be listing from Turks and Caicos next weekend or next week. Any recommendations? That's from Chairman Steve in Wildwood. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> Any recommendations on there restaurants are, from the Turks are, and Caicos? There are Publix at Turks and Caicos. <laughs> Probably not. I just go anywhere. <laughs> There's probably not a lot of horrible restaurants at vacation paradises, are there? They wouldn't make it. And most of these people are going to all inclusives and not leaving the hotel anyway. <laughs> these people. These you people. Just crap on all inclusives. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, all right. I very when I go to Hito, I'm there for two weeks. I leave the resort once to go out to dinner. Too much sex. No, they have great restaurants there. So there's no reason to leave. Yeah. I like a good all-inclusive. <laughs> I feel like there'd be a lot of pickles eaten, you know, because it's pickles. supposed to, like, rejuvenate you after, like, a long exercise. You know, if you do, like, marathons, pickle juice and pickles are always key. And I feel like with the sex parties and the all-night benders and the <laughs> Jamaican jerk chicken and oh, the hot Bill. tub. Oh, oh, there's my friend Bill. I feel like you'd need some sort of pick-me-up. You're not going to get eight hours of sleep, so you need... I think that's what they use in terms of how, avoiding cramps. I don't believe I've ever seen a pickle at Hito. <laughs> <Put that off>. <laughs> <laughs> I like that quote. Pickle juice? I think pickle juice is supposed to avoid cramps. That's why you see a lot of marathon runners drink it. Don't bananas do the same thing? I think so, yeah. I use pickle juice in a, when I make a remoulade sauce. I put pickle juice in it. Pickle stickles are a very underrated summer snack, by the way. I Frozen think. pickle juice, yeah. yeah. But the fruit we had in Jamaica was very, very good. If I'm not mistaken, I remember those. Little bananas mm -hmm. were super good. Yeah. They were just the tiny little guys. The plantains? Oh, yeah. the papaya was unbelievable. Yeah, that, that, man, you said an apple there. That papaya wasn't good. Yeah. Can't find it anywhere here. Well, that was a fun time down there. I miss it. I always look at the memories and go, man. That's my Facebook profile picture of me and Madison on that uh, on that boat.
Really? Right before Jackson jumped in with his mm, floating device. The diaper yeah. hits again. The Schaefer <laughs> Door Company, 9 o'clock hour. <laughs> Welcome, friends, to our 9 o'clock hour. It is TMA, and it's presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. My name is Timothy Michael McKernan, Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth Higgistrow, the Plowhawk, and Action Jackson with you. Design, air, heating, and cooling email of the day coming your way in about a half hour. Jackson and I will head down the hallway. We will deal with it. We will be fine. It's called Balloon Party. And uh, then the weekend commences here uh, for uh, the Friends of the Feather. And, uh, Doug, we uh, plan on being back on Monday to do the program. That's the plan. Yeah. And uh, Hopefully it works out. You will be fresh off of holding the Blues accountable yeah. uh, when you go down to the room on Sunday. Are you doing this before the game or after the game? Between periods, Tim, based oh on what I see. God. There'll be some shell shock players. I don't doubt Are you going to look at Kyra and go, you want to be here? That kind of how you start off. Might be know? how I begin, yeah. I'll go around the room. You can believe you, me. <laughs> what if coaches allowed reporters mid, <laughs> like in an intermission to come out and just scold the hell out of them? Mm, or fans, <laughs> random fans. Just like like five random fans mm. from each seat, and they just really get to go in there. And just I would, you know what I'd like is if like Twitter tough guys were welcome to go down and either talk to the Cardinals. Talk to the Blues mm -hmm. and say the same things they tweet about right in front of these guys. Right. I hate who are to like ha <laughs> <laughs> half of half of one of these gentlemen could annihilate one of these guys. Mm -hmm. But no, say it to the whole room. You're tough. You got big things going on. The PR announcer should pull up some tweets like somebody bashing Pareko, call him soft, and then have mm -hmm. that guy go. Talk to Pareko. It'd be a great promotion, especially if the team was really <laughs> struggling. You couldn't yeah. get fans in the seats, and and you were going to televise. The between periods of a random fan who's going to be allowed it into the locker room to yell at the players. Be, you couldn't help but watch that, right? I think players yeah, would be... Have, they would like they it, would too. Right? Yeah. It looks like they have that at the Kim English press conferences. Just random people coming in there and asking. Uh-huh. So I want the guy who tweeted at you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be great. I think we've kind of stumbled mm -hmm. upon some great marketing campaign for a team that's in that lower tier. Right. You'd have to be out of the playoff yeah, Like the Pirates could just do this nightly. Right. Right. Before game <laughs> and after the game. I would like a team that's got like 100 losses. They have a promotion that somebody gets to manage the team tomorrow. I think that, yeah, like play like the Bana Savannah Bananas or whatever, whoever mm -hmm. the team is. They kind of have some quirky stuff. Yeah. That's when you know you really lost control of the team. It's when you're calling fans down. <laughs> <laughs> Let us have it. <laughs> well, it might not go well. It sounds funny right now, but it might not. It might not go well. You certainly have to I, sign some sort of insurance policy just in case the player does right. take it personal and mm -hmm. you get yourself a black eye and a couple. They would of laugh. <laughs> they would laugh. <laughs> yeah, they think it's pretty funny. <laughs> they would laugh. Yeah, especially like meeting the person, seeing that person actually in real life. Mm -hmm. Nacho cheese like on the corner of his mouth. Right. Never played a. Game of hockey in his life. He's got a 69 jersey that says, like, tank on it or something. Like, that's kind of what we're dealing with. I get involved, uh, Jeff Lottman, Compass Realty, text inbox 314-881-TMA5. Call in Callier and Thompson phone line 6369004. TMA and email in the morning after at InsideSTL.com for our design, air, heating, and cooling email of the day. Schaefer Door Company, sponsor of the 9 o'clock hour. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. That's how you spell it. SchaeferDoor.com. And we have a number that is specific for our listeners. If you have garage door issues, 636-782-3608. 636 3608 That's spring breaks. That's a problem. You need Schaefer Door out there quick, fast, in a hurry. And then another thing, considering uh, the star mode we were in yesterday, uh, if you have hail damage, uh, Schaefer Door Company has a ton of experience in working with uh, exterior roofing companies handling your project to repair hail damaged doors. Uh, they've done over 100 doors this year already from hailstorms. Uh, that came through last fall, and they'll probably do at least 50 more before all the damage is repaired. So Schaefer Door handles that as well, and I know there was hail in the area yesterday. It's Schaefer Door Company. They service all kinds of garage doors for service and new installs, plus they service commercial doors too. 636-782-3608, or go online at SchaeferDoor.com. Do you see some of that hail they had out in the uh, Winsfield Territories? It had hail the size of baby hedgehogs. I mean, it was it was larger than golf ball size. 
I had it come down to my house big time. Oh, too, is that right? But nothing yeah. close to that big. That there was, was lots of hail. That was the worst stretch. And we had a little bit of sunlight there for the afternoon, but that stretch there in the evening with the worst rain I have ever dealt with. We were just, really? I was just really? inside. Oh, last okay. night? Last night for sure, yeah. The wow. city got pounded. Like, we got pounded. The hail wasn't that big, but the sound with the wind, mm -hmm. it literally sounded like an apocalypse outside. It went crazy. I had a few Lightning drops. everywhere. I had a few drops. That's about it. Really? A few drops of rain is all you had? I didn't have much at all. Edwardsville really? got absolutely pelted. I think Festus got pelted there as well. Yeah. I saw a tornado land out near there. There was some damage in Illinois, some deaths in Ohio. My sister called me because she was watching the Weather Channel. Apparently, St. Louis is a big hot topic. You know, with the yeah. you know, size hail and mm -hmm. all that. And she called me to make sure everything was all good. It wasn't that bad. I thought it was kind of scary. Did you yeah. mark yourself safe? I, I made sure to text everybody and said, hey, I'm, I'm safe and all, all is well. It looked like the end of the world when I was golfing and the tornado sirens were going off. Thought, ah, but, you, but you kept grinding. Ah, we can get in a couple more holes. <laughs> that doesn't come down to later. <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? But it didn't rain because I was outside. First, I just I cleaned off my patio table. Um, then I did a little uh, tilling with my garden weasel. And it was thunder. And, and lightning in the back and gray clouds and then nothing it didn't even rain you're saying it didn't rain yesterday in the st louis area not early afternoon oh it sure as hell did it was raining hard around in the city around like five i think jackson's yeah 4 35 o'clock so i'm with iggy on that like from like one to five it was prime it looked scary it looked like it was going to and it never did boy it poured where i was Poor dad. I couldn't believe it, man. My dad was driving home from New Athens, Illinois, dug the nail. Yeah. And he said it was like the worst storm he's ever driven in. Well, how about that? We had ankle sized water like on our curb. Like that's how it was so it, yeah. it, it, it couldn't even have time to drain. It was like literally ankle size. And it wasn't that windy because I had my my uh patio door open. And normally if it's windy, the blinds will fly back and forth. And they were hardly moving, so it really wasn't a lot of wind. You didn't forecast this storm, did you? Is Maryland Heights inside like some sort of dome? Yeah, where I think it doesn't get this weather. Maybe they weren't covered by, covered by any high winds. I think that the worst, and I think a tech there brought it up, and it brings me back to where me and Tim were in a golf cart with no like oh, visor. At the dotum. At the dotum. At the dotum oh, and it was pelting us. Doug, it pierced our flesh. Oh, it it actually hurt. Like, like driving that golf cart, you could feel like little pins just hit you. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah, and I predicted that too. I think the texture said you didn't predict it. <laughs> well, if you look at the video with Tim and Plowsy, they made sure that I predicted it's going to pass us over. That. But, oh, it's just a Passover cloud. It just oh, started nice. going. Sweet mother of mercy. Have you been outside ever without any protection and been hailed on? I wonder what that feels like. I was tempted yesterday to go out there and say, I wonder what that feels like to get hit. I went out to roll up my balls. windows at the beginning of the hail, and it actually is not fun. I mean, there, we probably have maybe... Penny, dime size, yeah. style. Like, it still, wasn't it still hurts a little bit. I mean, it's got to be like an ice ball being dropped off a 40 story building. Oh, that, those baseball size ones? The I bet that would size, just yeah. hurt like hell, dude. Yeah. Now you just have an umbrella just slices right through. Well, if you had a helmet, you'd be all right, probably. It would still hurt. It'd be, be like getting hit with a bunch of pitches. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine coming in just all bloodied, bruised. Yeah. Mother Nature is uh, no saint. She's a cruel mistress. Mm, she is. Uh, well, that's what we get when it's well, all the trees, 75 degrees in March. All the trees are going to start popping. You just needed that rain, and then another day close to 70 tomorrow on the sun, and that's mm -hmm. the trees are just going to start popping. We've already had to cut the grass. Yeah, I've Of course, I've got seen. green envy. I, that. Yeah, it's part of the deal. The tree out in front has never had buds on it this early in the year, and they're ready to start blooming leaves. And the uh, dogwoods are already the uh, and the orange blossoms. One of those white trees. Bradford pears, maybe. Yeah. I've got those that are white now. Yeah, they're already white now. Yeah. Usually, it's April. I can't wait to see Ray's Creek. Oh, oh dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Georgia pines. Oh, Bill. Don't have grass anywhere else. You have to think of that every time you think. Yeah. Oh, Bill. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bill. That's coming up in what, less than a month. Remember they show the Baseball. drive up with the April, players and the trees. Uh, 11th, Doug. Oh, how do you do? And the baseball season starts in less than two weeks. That's, That's actually more insane to me that the baseball yeah. season is right around the corner. I mean, we have the fantasy baseball draft. 
Oh, yeah, Joe says we uh, now need another guy again. Oh, keep, I keep making my case for Iggy. I got to pay the uh, league safe fee still. I, forgot. I keep forgetting that. Well, I'm available. You'd have to pay. Well, I always pay. Uh -oh. So you want to be in the league? I'm like you. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you still owe Dan Packer money. I do not. Dan Patrick. Or Danny Stack, you owe money too. Yeah, Dan sure Patrick <laughs> created the league. <laughs> you, can't, you can't even draft if you don't pay. Take a vote. Most of the 15 people in there. Do you want Iggy in? Well, Joe's resigning. If you're in. Who cares? <laughs> well, he's the commissioner. We have two separate votes. Let Would you want Let Iggy in? Let the baby quit. Oh, you can't call the commissioner a baby. Well, if he is this a... isn't a good start for the uh, repairing the relationship right. here. If Iggy plays, I quit. Take my ball and go home. Wah, wah. I don't think you're going to get in now. Not after this outburst. No, because people don't want to don't want to be the commissioner. And you'd win the league, no doubt, and that would... <laughs> well, I would have two years in a row. Sure, you would always win it. Lefty Jacksmere says, I gladly join the Fantasy League in Iggy's stead. No, you want Lefty Jacksmere in? Uh, Lefty Jacksmere, I, I think, care. is like a likable, normal person. Yeah. yeah. Get in, Lefty, and uh, then I'll be your... Don't tell anybody, but I'll be your <laughs> co-manager, and I'll do all the... You get moves. to call all the shots, I'll do all the and moves. he pays the money. Yeah, but he can have all the money, too. I don't care. I just kind of miss playing. Well, you can get in a league somewhere. That's no, not this one. People invite me. It's a keeper league, and I get stuck with the person who quit all their players. And I do that. There are leagues that aren't keeper leagues. Well, not the ones I'm invited to. Oh, brother. <laughs> Trying so hard to make something work. I just texted uh, Lefty Jacksmere, producer Joe. Lefty Jacksmere's information to producer Joe. Said this guy wants to be in, and I think he's normal. Oh, he is? Yeah. Pretty sure I've met him at an event. Man, the text line really wants in this league. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe's hitting him up. Lefty Jack Smear, you're in, just like that. Doug, we get things done. Yeah, it seems like we do. Yeah. DM me, Lefty. <laughs> so he you're going to be a super agent? <laughs> he doesn't want to get in, so you can Who the k in that play. scenario? Is it Iggy? <laughs> k -Berg was my money guy. I know, Lefty. I think he's the kind of guy that would say, yeah, you're part of the team. I just won't tell Joe. <laughs> but he wants to play. That's fine. <laughs> We cannot have any black marks in this. I feel like halfway through the year, Joe's going to figure it out, and all hell is going to break loose. Mm -hmm. But Lefty comes across to me as a guy who will play and then never put a roster together and just forget about it. We always, you always need those guys in the league, though. Pick up a win or two when you need one. Nice dub. Mm -hmm. Kind of that morale boost you need yeah. to kind of keep yourself in the hunt. Yeah. One of those look ahead and you go, oh, man, two weeks, yes. Got him. <laughs> but it's bad, though, to have people that fall out of the you race don't want early and then quit, become deadbeat owners. That's no good. When I'm really bored the last few years since I haven't played fantasy baseball, I'll still do a fake mock Google draft. You can do those to kind of mm -hmm. practice. I'll just go join one and just draft it's to fun. see how I do. Baseball is the most fun because it's the most positions. Like, it, it's just... To me, it had the difficulty difficulty level at the highest. You got to stay on top of it for sure. Football, one injury to a quarterback or wide receiver, you're pretty much done. Yeah. You can salvage a season in baseball. You cannot really do that in football. Take in, complete. In, in fact, by the end of the year, you've got usually less than half the players you drafted. I think my team got third place, and I looked, and I only had four drafted players. Yeah. Pretty good. Mm hmm. Big Pick Energy says he's going to make a fantasy league and Iggy can be in it. All right, you're in, Iggy. The drug league. Right. Invite me and let me see who's in it. Nice. You might not want to play because of who's in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't have to correspond with the people. It's just a, another team on the website somewhere. Well, it depends, too. Maybe I uh, just pay afterwards. Pay afterwards? Well, it's the last one I played in for the fan page, and nobody paid me. Still bitter about that. Yeah, I'm still bitter about that. Oh, yeah. It was $50 a player, and I had 14 players didn't pay me. You do the math, it's $700. Did you pay going in? No, because nobody did. Yes, okay. <laughs> if <I were> to, <laughs> if you didn't pay either, you've got no, no complaint. But if I would have lost, I would have paid. Oh, maybe. It was just one of those leagues that, uh, yeah, it's $50. It's on your honor. We'll divvy up at the end of the year if everybody yeah. pays the winner. I mean, if I would have lost, I'd... Send 50 bucks to the guy. That's why Joe's important. He set up League Safe mm -hmm. several years back, and it has been flawless since that.
Yeah. I forgot when that that was implemented. Yeah, a couple clicks. Congrats. <clears throat> Gosh, you're still Man. down on Joe. Pissed. Still very much down on Joe. I just don't like him. <laughs> so down. <laughs> That's down. <bro. laughs> okay. Well, he's done a marvelous job as commissioner. That's for sure. <laughs> now you're going to be in Big Pick Energies League as long as you like all the guys in there. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> it might be hard to find a league where you like all the guys. The I, enemy I, I, list is pretty long. You actually need a random one from like Ohio, like that somebody just. No, I mean if up. it's if it's mm. a bunch of people from the fan page and I've got like six of them blocked, <laughs> oh, I'm not going to play with them. I think that would be a good thing to have. I think you should play a fantasy league with every single person you have blocked on your Facebook page. Mm. Pick twelve or eleven. You'd be the twelve. Invite them. Don't talk at all. Just tell them where the draft is. Nobody com- converses with each other. Mm-hmm. And there you go. You got yourself it's a hate league. <laughs> you have so much sexual tension in one league yeah, that lasts six why months. I put that together. I don't know who could have put it together. I'm not. No, I wouldn't expect you to. <laughs> I didn't put you at the commissioner type. <laughs> no. no, I'm just saying. You haven't got the time, frankly. All I do is block people lately. I don't know. I'm nice enough to accept these people as friends, and then two weeks later, they're trashing me. They turn on you. So I just said, well, all right, don't know why you asked me to be a friend, whether you're just going to trash me, but see ya. Blocking. I did. How many people do you figure you got blocked? I don't know. Hundreds? I don't know. <laughs> well, dozens? I really don't know. Scores? <laughs> it could be 20, it could be 200, I don't remember. Oh, we counted 98, and that was well before the real blocking happened. Mm. I, I feel like we tripled that number. It's not anything like, ha, get you, I blocked you. No, mm. well, why? I don't I have no use for you. Yeah. I don't need to just see you <laughs> trashing me and mm-hmm. Nothing taking more... stuff from my, my personal Facebook page and plastering on the fan page and then just right. making fun of me. I mean, it's stupid. I so understand that. If someone bothers you, just, just get rid of it. and I don't have to see it anymore. Yeah. It's no big deal. You ever think about just getting away from social media? It doesn't seem like it brings you a lot of upside. No, I enjoy social media. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should get Except more... Except for pla- the people on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just... It's, it's all people from the fan page. But, a lot of, but you're not on the fan page and you're still complaining but I, about I know it. they're from there. <laughs> Who? Well, the I hater? can't help when people send me screenshots. I don't screenshots. ask... Screenshots! I don't <laughs> ask for them. Uh, this guy took a shot at you today, and they sent me a screenshot. I don't ask for them. Somebody send me things when they trash me. I don't care because I got off there for that reason, one of the reasons, so I don't need to see it. But everything else on Facebook, I enjoy reading people's posts and things like that. The only thing on the fan page I see is when people send me screenshots. Oh, Doug, you ever send me screenshots? I haven't yet, but I, I may later today. And it's people you wouldn't even think would take shots at you. But <laughs> Who's yeah. taking oh, these here shots? We are. We're not quite. <laughs> We're Aaron Grievance. It's Grievance. No, Aaron I'm not C-C. mentioning When's names. the name coming down? <laughs> Who is taking these shots? I'm not going to mention names. That's what they want. Ha, ha, I got him. He mentioned me on the fan. He mentioned me on the show. Ha, I got him. No, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of me mentioning your name. Do you know these people personally? Uh, a couple of them. <laughs> a couple of them I don't. A couple of them I just... You know, I don't send friend requests, so if, if they're friends of mine, they've sent me a request. So I'm nice enough to accept them. I don't know why you'd go to all that trouble to be accepted and then just trash the guy. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I have enough friends. I have not accepted a friend request in so long. I. Well, I feel bad because of what you I, do I don't for do that anymore. If you're not friends <laughs> with me on Facebook after 10 or 12 years of being on Facebook, we, we done, like, we done so. Well, usually, I have to have a, a few... Uh, friends that I have in common, if they have a few friends in common. <laughs> you know, if I see somebody <laughs> sends me one that has no friends in common, they have two friends and they have one profile pic and that's it, all they have on their Facebook page. And no. they're from Singapore. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> How about see, if you see Sparky Pfeiffer, run. He's never asked. That's a bot. Um, I would accept Sparky You know, but I feel, I feel, I try to be, <laughs> I try to be nice and because of what you do for a living, it could be a listener that, you know, and if you don't accept him, uh, what a dick. Just couldn't even accept my friend request. He's too good for me. 
If that's yeah. how his personality is, then I'm glad I denied. You think anyone's ever uttered that sentence? <laughs> 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 this guy on the radio sucks. He didn't accept my friend. Oh, I'm sure. Sadly, I think I'm with Iggy. I think people probably have said that. So I just try to be nice and. You're just a nice guy, <laughs> and people are taking advantage well, of you. I am really. Yeah. Try to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm off, but I just feel like no one's really like. So rarely are people like super active on Facebook outside of like some like the fan page, like doing like daily posts. But maybe I'm off. Maybe it's just my age group. I don't know. I post quite often on Facebook. Usually stupid Speedo stuff. Speedo pictures. Uh, according to some people, it's a weekly thing. It's not. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't mind I mean, social media. The, like, the fan page is like the King Ranch of engagement farming. And if you don't know, King Ranch is the largest farm in the United States. Like, it is? It, when you're sad and desperate for attention, your wife has already been ignoring you for the last 10 years. You have your friends have kind of locked that. You're looking for that, like, like it's bashing Iggy on the fan page. It gets you instant likes. It gets you comments. It gets, oh, great job. I love this post. And, like, that gets the people through the day. Mm. So I think that's part of what the fan page is. It's almost like therapy. Like, you, you get your your likes and clicks, and then you can go about your evening. Yeah, that's why maybe. I love the fan page. Well, the, the fact is... Most people spend a big part of their day looking on, looking at and holding onto their phone. And if they scroll social media at some mm-hmm. point and just make a real quick post or a real quick like, it's not a big part of their day necessarily. It's just something that they spend 15 seconds doing. Yeah, but some and people... it might have an impact on other people, but a lot of people just kind of do it. as. Uh, I think if you got away from social media, you'd be a lot happier. I really do. Or a lot less unhappy. No, because people, you want to, people would still send me screenshots. Okay, well then, when they when they send them to you, say please don't send this to me, and then it ends it. And then if they do, then you got a different situation on your hands, and they won't. Yeah, it's, you it's, it's really like I was. I mean, I'm not trying to activate the learn thing, but I was BSing with Learn and Rafe yesterday, and she goes, "How do I tag you in something on social media?" I said, "Honestly, I've kind of retired from social media." If Jackson tweets something and tags me in it for the show, I retweet it or whatever the hell it is on Instagram stories. I said, I just don't want to be involved in it. And it's a, it's a positive. She goes, oh, my God. She goes, how do you do that? And I go, I just decided I didn't want to do it. It's not a positive in my life. I don't, you know, I don't care. <laughs> so I don't want to. I look at, like, stuff that interests me, like TikTok is where I go, or some reels on Instagram, I suppose. Um, but other than that, I just don't care. And it's just really simple. And it's such a, it's such a, it's, I don't know what I'd call it liberating. It's just kind of logical. Especially for, it clearly bothers you. You can sit here and say it doesn't, but my God, how much time well, do you spend on do. this stupid but ass not, Facebook but, page? But not all of them. I mean, there's, you know, for every 20 or 30 that I enjoy, I get one that, you know, kind of gets to me. But I'm not going to. But then that's enough. So, okay, then then. But, but why bring that into your mental orbit? Uh, it just goes away after a few hours. But it doesn't. We're on the up. Ep- <laughs> <sure about it. laughs> well, I'm doing this to trash some people on the Facebook, on the fan page, pretty much. But uh, right. Well, then what's the point of that, though? I mean, like, because we have a nice size audience. We're talking about like a stupid little page. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Stupid little page. And it's nothing against the page itself. I'm just saying it's it's a sliver of the people who listen to this show. It's, this well, isn't know, a right? show for like 300 people in a club. <laughs> I know. It's like less it's than a waste of time. A percent. <laughs> yeah, right. So why do it? I don't know. All right. Mm. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> take, it, take it out of your life. You'll be happier. I mean, if the, like, so what? I know there are places I can go and read awful things about me and my family for that matter. So I just don't do it. I mean, it's just kind of a, it's just, just do don't I? do it. But we should okay, try. but then people don't send screenshots. And like, if a friend of mine sent me, I mean, I can't even imagine like a guy who's got like a life. But either way, he sent me a screenshot of it. I'd go, hey, you know, thanks, but please don't send that to me. I intentionally don't want to read it. So I appreciate the sentiment, I guess. But don't please don't send it to me. And then that should end it. And then this is not a part of your life. You've made a choice to leave the page. All right, stop sending me screenshots. Well, I mean, nice. when somebody if somebody were to do that, then then just say, hey. You know, I, if you're doing this to be kind, I appreciate it, but it is better for me if I just don't see it. We could do an experiment and try it for a week. Iggy would obviously, ha- obviously would have to be on board for that as well. And then after that week's end, you give a, a rundown of how you feel. 
Do you miss it? I think that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I'd miss it because I'd miss Instagram. I mean, Instagram, no problem with. I never anybody trashed me on Instagram. Um, and there's not a lot of really mean posts. I mean, you see some of the things on Facebook, and I just scroll right by them. And it's not about me, but it seemed to be upset with everything in the world. Instagram comments are brutal too, man. This stuff is not like limited to Facebook. I don't know. Facebook, Instagram is mostly pictures and no, things like that. I mean, for your experience, maybe different, but I'm just telling you that it's, it's, it's any time you allow people anonymously to vent what's going on with them personally that hasn't worked out, you are going to have anger and hate. That's just it. Yeah, my hundred years ago, it was white sheets. Now we got dog avatars. So whatever, f off. Don't let it into your life. <laughs> no, Instagram doesn't bother me. Facebook doesn't bother me for the most part because you're not getting the hate there. But Instagram's toxic too. Iggy, you Can't should confirm. go. <laughs> <laughs> any, any comment section, for the most part, is kind of accessible. Well, yeah, if you stay away from the comments, there's really nothing to... You see Duke, they lost to NC State, and they had to turn off the comments. The Duke University basketball Twitter page had to turn off the comments. Why is that? They're so soft. But, like, that's another example of, like, just... Are comments on those pages even worth the time? I, for Duke's point of view, I'm sure I understand where they're coming from. You know, they had that severe injury with Filipowski that lasted 12 mm. hours, and then he went up and did them 360 dunks in the next game, and then they lost, and then they're throwing stuff at NC or North Carolina players. So turning off the comments is a smart play, but man, people were banty as all hell about that. Because their team lost a basketball game. <laughs> A game that really has no bearing on no. none. You know, people are just so angry in general now, and I I think it's because I saw a theory the other day, you know, with the crime rate up and the violence we're seeing in schools and everything, it's because so many people have been told that they are the victims mm. of something. You can almost always find a category that you are a victim of, whether that's based on your sex, your sexual preference, your race, your religion. Uh, your body type, whatever, you can find something that makes you a victim. Yep. And then when you start not to get your way about something, people lash out with anger. I think it's screen time and desensitization there, buddy. I think they're desensitized at such a young age about... I mean, Twitter, you can literally have murder videos on Twitter. Nobody... How many parents are following or, you know, monitoring Twitter pages? There are on mm -hmm. TikTok and things like that. It's a cesspool what you can see at such a young age, like sex-wise, violence what like... Yeah. You can get people's opinions and take those opinions, and your brain isn't fully developed, and those opinions now become your own, and you know you turn to, you know, much more angry, vindictive person at such a younger age, like nineteen, twenty year olds, like hate life right now, and this should be the prime time just enjoying yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think there's too much information given, and they just don't, they can't process it in time, and it just pisses people off. Yeah. Like, how about this? I'm a happy person. Have a good weekend, fellas. That's from Chairman Stephen Wildwood. Oh, he right, is. Steve. He is. Well, he's going to Turks and Caicos. That's right. I he's looking I'd for recommendations. Too. Imagine looking for food option from us mm -hmm. at a place like that. I'm sure the seafood's great down there. Absolutely. Ditch carp, probably easy to find. I'm a victim of drowning in the... Uh, oh, and then it's a five-letter word for cat and put... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I almost said it. <laughs> cat and <laughs> kitten. <laughs> Nice. Uh, uh, that's Juan from PP Corp. Doug, he's drowning in it. He's, he's drowning in what exactly? Five letter word for cat or kitten. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Think about that, Doug. <laughs> All right. And then say it on air. Uh, yeah, exactly <laughs> like me. Oh, God. I mean, social oh. media can be fixed. I think oh. there's a lot of positive. I mean, I don't know if it will. But I, I think the avatars and having to use real names is so important. And it's been that. we Tim talked about that. We've talked about that. The American flag and, you know, all that sorts of like that. Like, obviously, the indicators of a, a real trigger warning kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I, I think if you just made it non-anonymous, non, you know, take away anonymity, I think that's huge. Well, even on Instagram and Facebook, it's still mostly people's real names, right? Is it Twitter's, I don't have, Twitter's the one no. where you got a bunch of fake things. I don't names. have Instagram no. and stuff fake. like that. So. I mean, not all, of course. Just like not all of Twitter is fake. But yeah, you got. I mean, you just have people just using. They're not using their real names. The ones who are problems most of the time, unless people are doing it as part of a 
a way to make money just by saying crap, which is a great way, you know, for when where we went to school and journalism school and communications, or just people now just get into it and they don't have a background in it, which is totally understandable since the major is essentially pointless anyway, or people using anonymous names. So it's like, why would you care? Like, who cares? What does it matter? You know, I have responsibility to my family and the people for whom I work and the people with whom I work and my friends. So why would I give a damn what somebody on the outside of that thinks? I just don't care. And they make stuff up anyway. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, so I'm just like, that's it. It's just, it's very, it's, it's it, and it's logical, I think, when you, when you present it that way. Yeah. Say, say what I've tried to, to, to say what is true, and then it said, oh, that's not true. And I was like, okay, then I'm not going to worry about it. What does it matter? It just And then it doesn't affect my life, so mm -hmm. why, why even engage in it? So I think we should probably treat it more like you're going into a, a big party where you, you speak nicely to the people that you know, maybe share a few pictures, a few stories, share your opinions with them if they're like-minded type of people, and avoid arguments and fights and just act like you're at a at a real life party. How you would behave there, if you behave that way online, you'd probably be okay. I would agree with you, but that but th th the thing is, at this quote unquote party, it, you don't have people who are operating on the same. So it's a different deal, you know. But you go to you go to parties with people that you wouldn't really want to be friends. With. I understand, there's, there's, there's but they're not wearing paper bags and scripture written on the paper bags. You know, this, that's that's the deal. We're not on the same. We're not playing the same game. You, as a public figure, write something, and it can be relatively benign, but it could be controversial in someone's mind. And then you will have people who are using fake accounts, or not fake accounts, but they're not using their real names. And then they try to take you out, or make you miserable, or crap on you. Block them. Well, that's what I'm saying. So it's not. It's the, that that is not analogous. It, it would not work because it does not work that way. It's like if you want to go back 15 years when uh, Joe Buck had his show and Artie Lang and they had the famous exchange, Joe could not win because Artie could go low and Joe couldn't unless he risked losing his job. You know what I mean? So you, we can't fight back. We fight back, we lose. Just engaging in the fight is the loss, so don't engage in the fight. Iggy is lost by even talking about this crap. Because right, okay. the people who want to be irritated or want to irritate him are feeling justified by the fact that Iggy, they know that they're in Iggy's heads. That's the win. You bitching about him, you, maybe it feels therapeutic for you, but those who want to piss you off have already won today. They got mentioned. And that's the thing. Yeah, they do yeah. like, they <laughs> do like validation. Yeah. But my thing is, like, in 50 years, I'd love to see the studies and, like, how people look at social media. Because it's obviously going to advance, but there's going to be a point where it's going to change, and it's going to be a major turning point, and, like, I, I just can't wait to see what people think about it looking back in 30, 40 years. I agree with you years. on that. Like, it's crazy. I, I, I bet it, they, they I think it'll crazy. be. I think it'll be looked at if everything's still around uh, in, in the same way that we look like Oh my God! They let people like who, who Joe DiMaggio was doing cigarette commercials or something. Yeah. you know that kind yeah. of thing. Like smoking on a plane, or cocaine or something and Coca Cola. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it'll be looked at that that way. Like this is just absolute absurdity. And the the, the core issue, and this is something that Herman was bringing up, is that the corporations actually empower it by citing it as, you know. Vox Populi, Doug, that, that it's the voice of the voice people. of the people. That, but but as I was saying on Twitter before, Twitter is the equivalent to the sound off section, which is something in the early days of the morning grind we would read and like go, look how stupid this is. But now publications and broadcast platforms, and I suppose podcasts as well, are then citing these to then bolster the stories. One user said, one person on X said. And it's not, it, it, now we're actually giving credibility to the sound off letter. And then it can dictate policy and or terminations or suspensions or where advertising dollars are implemented or pulled. It's, it's phenomenal what's going on. Mm -hmm. We've normalized the insane yeah. and empowered it. Not just normalized it, but empowered it. Yeah. We're at a period in time where intelligent people are afraid to speak for fear of offending stupid people. So, yeah, I mean, like, that thing, so just go full circle on it, because I've got to do the design, air, heating, and cooling email of the day. But, I mean, it's just, I just, I mean, there's just, it's not bringing you any joy. It's... Oh, a lot of it does. Okay, then stay on it. But, I mean, how much time do we spend on people on the fan page, man? And you're not even on it. And then you got people who are sending you screenshots? 
I just, I, I mean, it's just a negative in your life, and I hate it for your sake because I think it wears you out. 90, 99% of the things I see on Facebook, I enjoy them. Okay, mm. well, let's stay on it. I don't know. But, I mean, people sending you screenshots. I don't even like 99% of the things yeah. I see on Facebook, I can tell you that. Well, it's happened like three times. So it's three times that I'm getting a little upset over some of the stuff I saw. From screenshots? Yeah. When did you leave the page? I'm sorry, I didn't want to... Has it been a year? Has it been a calendar year? Oh, probably Has not. it been longer than that? Probably longer than that. Okay. I wasn't going anywhere with it. I just couldn't remember the day or the, the year, so... It's just... Trying to hash back, look back at all the memories. Well, it's, important, <laughs> it's an important time in all of our lives. Yeah. Well, you've left a couple times, right? <laughs> yeah. Remember it blocked or he yeah. got banned for like a week yeah. or two? <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a, for oh. posting the Will Ferrell Boner picture, I got, blocked. I got <laughs> knocked off. That was a week. big topic, I remember that. Yeah. Funny. And I felt that we were at Hubbard then at that time, I think. Mm. I got suckered. Yeah, is that the bird? Zuckerberg. <laughs> it is an interesting one to pick to suspend somebody for. Yeah, there was no nudity or nothing. I think it's the fan page. I think the amount of complaints warrants the, like, it doesn't matter. I think it's just the amount of people who are quote unquote offended. So if you don't like Iggy on the fan page, no, you know, it, I no, get, it's it. That's not it. No, okay. it, they, no, things are just pulled or people are suspended. That's so for, weird. For whatever the, the words. Yeah. Then the, 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 it goes back to the beginning of the page. I'll get a notification. This post was pulled. And I'm like, okay, what happened? And it was from 2017. I thought there'd be complaints attached to it. That would be why they would be pulled. I, I gather it's, it's an algorithm of some kind. Yeah, it's that. Because they don't read the post. They see a word. They don't That's read the correct. post. Yeah, the context is absolutely... I'll read it and I'll go, well, that was benign. Yeah. You know? But I got I got banned one time for a week because I was kidding with a guy. He says, you got to give me that recipe. I said, it's my mom's recipe. If I give it to you, I'll have to kill you. I said, I'll kill you. Off for a week. They didn't read the context of what I was saying. It was just... Yeah. They write it's all you. about the words, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Facebook, though, fun. Let <laughs> yourself be happy, please, Ken. That's from the bastard James Hahn. How about that? They're bagging on the, I am happy. On the text line. You're crestfallen much of the time. I... Like yeah. now. <laughs> I'm not crestfallen now. Okay. Uh, social media is perfectly calculated to hit the part of your brain that reacts no matter how anodyne the content it's extremely unhealthy, and the population has no idea how to handle it. That's from Connie Lassiter and Greg Bickle. They have a joint account. Both of them together. But I think the studies on this will be fascinating. Well, there's good and bad with it. I mean, you know, a lot of things have been accomplished with Facebook and Twitter, and, you know, people have met people from high school they hadn't seen forever or long-lost friends and keep in touch with relatives. Mm -hmm. And the suicide rate is high as it's ever been because of social media. So, you know, there's always going to be good and bad with everything. Um, all right, I uh, got to get to the design here. Heating and cooling email of the day. Hey, hey. Ahoy. You like when an email starts with ahoy? I, I don't mind. It's <laughs> Navy talk. Be fun. In the 8 o'clock hour, I heard Doug pose the query, is there ever a topic they, the listeners, like? Does it always have to be cuckolding? <laughs> like yeah. if we did three hours of cuck talk every day, would it work? I think they would enjoy that, sure. I quite enjoyed that. Plus, Doug has super cute bangs now. <laughs> and that's hot. Damn hot. Big. Eek. How do you do? Concerns? Thoughts? No fooling. That's yeah. from fellow Fantasy Baseball League member Lefty Jacksmere. Lefty? Doug. Jack That's smear. what you have to look forward to in the draft on Monday night. <laughs> Can't wait. He's excited already. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah, producer Joe doesn't mess around. Learn. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Learn. 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 Preposterous Bobby Orr story. Tim puts up with a lot, but like a diamond, he sparkles from the pressure he endures. But this email is about ADHD. <laughs> Pretty sure my khaki boyfriend has it. Last night, he was giving me some wrist action when all of a sudden he abandoned it and just stuck his pinky in my back cave. Oh. That's from Mike, and then the last name is Rochburns. Mike? Oh, I get it. R Roach Bear. He pretty much just mailed it in. Banner first hour for Pepper and Genie this morning. No wonder Ken is so insistent that he's 
Not a producer. The dude is riddled with PTSD after he was definitely fired for getting one of the best hockey players ever to walk the earth on with Frank and definitely not for taking 45-minute smoke breaks multiple times per day, leaving smut mags around the workplace, listening and texting into shows on competing stations while his show was live on the air and taking passive-aggressive shots at the boss over the phone. I'm not sure what the statute of limitations is for unjust firings, but I think it's time to turn the AC on your design air HVAC system, bop in your com commandeered Munganass Toyota RAV4, and head over to Brown and Crouppen and see if they want to join the list of sponsors doing pro bono style work for you. <laughs> My heart broke listening to Plowsy talk about being cut from the Little Giants basketball team. I wasn't heartbroken. <laughs> You'd think dropping 25 on Sean Livingston would negate <laughs> sodomizing yourself with cheesy corn puffs and feeding them to teammates on road trips and trading Whopper with cheese meals for dime bags, but unfortunately that's the world we live in in these days. If sticking Cheetos in your leather Cheerio and having your best mates unknowingly eat the E. coli riddled treat is wrong, I don't want to be right. Thank you. Save me a spot in the Fan Page Club Championship. I want to play, but I'm going to spend this afternoon reaching out to the publicists of 80-year-old washed-up past their prime rock stars to see if I can score an interview for me and my coerced work wife who is 30 years younger than me and wouldn't Work walk wife. across the street to urinate on me if I was on fire. Work wife. Speaking of being urinated on, have I ever told you about the time I was hiding in a bush after I took a run at this guy's uh. wife and got beat on? Also, did you know Lucy Lawless had a Merkin on in Spartacus? But she never got to use it. I'm repping 4 L with my 20 so treacherous introduce y'all to the pop pop duggets. Blueberry pop pop. Oh, blueberry pop pop. Good morning. Here's a little nugget about me and Gus. We despise the K-State badminton club team. We don't like K-State. We don't like the sport. We don't like the rules, and we don't like the fan base. Anyways, I want to talk about the K-State badminton team here a bit. Okay. <laughs> we neglected it so far. <laughs> a bunch of desperate geeks who badly seek my validation DM me screenshot of K-State's highlights, box scores, roster changes, and schedule. I always welcome the DMs and entertain the conversation. Then I like to let that negative energy consume me without proactively deleting it from my life. Oh, well, maybe I'll just focus on Portnoy and Lana Rhodes. They're the worst, so sometimes I mosey on over to their pages to engage in a little activity I like to call wasting time on stuff I dislike without changing my circumstances. That's from Gus and Tilly Grundlehorn. Yeah. If you need us, we'll be in the bushes letting people piss on us. <laughs> oh, back-to-back yeah, -back emails. Two different ones. <laughs> Gus even, and Tilly Grundlehorn. didn't even talk about that today. And Batman's a very underrated game. Sandy Hawkins, Doug, you know, uh, you talk about the tournament, and you talk about Providence with God Sham God, and they knocked off Quayton with Dougie McBuckets, and you talk about Kim English trending on black Twitter, and the ladies want to know if he's single. But I think the lead is that Mizzou lost to Georgia two nights ago. <laughs> Is that a new report? Well, no. We should have all seen it coming, and not just because it was discussed on yesterday's show. <laughs> But superfan Jackson wrote off their chances weeks ago when he said, sure, they could make the tournament, but unfortunately, that would require them to defeat an SEC opponent, which is something they've been unable to do all season. Today's show is sponsored by our official dentist with the hot assistance. I'm not going to mention his name because he's not a real sponsor, nor is he a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> I've never sought out any kind of management position because I could never be a manager because I have a conscience, and I just couldn't let someone down by firing them. I will sleep with a friend's wife behind his back. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, separate issue. I didn't fire anybody. I know a lot about being fired, and it's great. It's never been performance-related. Always some personal vendetta against me, like the time Jason Barrett fired me during my performance review. Well, maybe that's a bad example. What about the time I got fired from Casey Masterpiece for berating some olds who gave me a lousy tip? Or the time I got fired from my Mater D job at St. Louis Country Club for refusing to sleep with some famous person's niece? Or the time I got fired for referring to Jesus, a fictional character, on air? Okay, gotta go now. I need to reach out to Ty Babylonia and try to get her to explain to Stevie Hicks that her new handler is stiff army so I can get this interview booked, which would impress Learn. That's from Buck Swope. Buck Swope with a nice little email this morning. And that's what we have for the Design Air Heating and Cooling email uh, of the day. I like she Blueberry got you, got you. Pop Pop and I like, like Buck Swope. I'm going to go with Buck Swope today. Yeah, there are too many inaccuracies in Swope's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what, what were the inaccuracies? Yeah, what were the inaccuracies? Well, I said it. I was talking about radio getting fired, and I tried to get fired at uh, the jock. So well, can't you just quit instead of try to get fired? <laughs> no, no, because I wanted unemployment. Um, 
I'm going to go with Pop Pop. <laughs> well, that puts me to the test because I thought mm-hmm. both were wor- really worthy. Uh, I like the K-State analogy from the Grendel Horts. They're doing great work. I know they have a big weekend trip, but I thought Buck Swope's was the best. Buck Swope has won the design air, heating and cooling email of the day. And Jackson and I have won because we're heading down the hallway to do balloon party. Switch your YouTubes over to the 101 ESPN channel. And all of us have won because Craig Betts brought in Bellows Bakery. Doug, I'm telling Birthday you. Birthday cake. Yeah. Sweet mother of mercy. Oh, it's so... oh. I know you talk about your jowls. Watering, yeah, yeah like a wolf on. on the cartoons. That's what it is. It's being gone by the time you guys get done with Blue Party. I am telling you. Whoa. Uh, yeah, Glenn Betts Jewelers, 15% off. Let them know you're a TMA listener. All right, time to head down the hallway. Have a wonderful weekend. For the Plowlock, for Action Jacks, for Kenneth, thank you, Stuart, for my brother, Kevin, for Douglas, Sullivan, and Tim McCurdy. This has been the morning after, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. You're hearing TMA all day.